looks like we're just waiting for John. Or I mean, yeah, John and Dave. Council member Cuesta and council member Stone. Okay. I wonder if they noticed that we're starting 15 minutes early. I know we said that last week, but. I can send them a quick e email. Yeah, please go ahead and do that. I'm gonna text them each, so. And I was going to say um, right now, if we only have cameras on for council, and then if you're in the queue for an interview, once it's your turn, we'll have you turn your camera on. Hi, Helene. We, um, you're muted, but we're going to do just a 10, 15 minute, get our, our sort of our self lined up for how to do this well, but you're you're welcome to listen in, but if you want to turn off your camera in the meantime. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Hey. Welcome, John. Sorry about being tardy here. It's all right. We thought maybe you didn't know we're starting early. I just I just couldn't find the email. It, for some reason, it went to my junk file. I don't know why. Excuses, yeah. excuses. I know, Cheryl. <laughs> well, and it was a little bit different than your normal meetings. I actually have trouble finding the emails, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. I think I only sent like four reminders out today. <laughs> yeah, once I found where they were, I saw all of them. <laughs> yeah, Dave is coming. He said he did you just resend it to him, Jackie? I will let yeah, him know because it's not going through Jeremy. I think that's the confusion. I do. And it, you know, I actually saw your first one probably the other day and just didn't click on it. Um, because I didn't think I don't know. And then I just thought I didn't have it because it wasn't in my calendar. <laughs> oh good. Yeah, we probably should have had Jeremy set it up just because that's what we're used to. I'm, I'm sure um, Member Cuesta won't mind if we start with this, this one thing. So I would prefer mm -hmm. tonight, we have seven questions. I would prefer that we not rotate them because it will get very confusing. So I'd like each of you to pick the one you want. I'm very glad to be the one who asks number six, which is regular attendance and whether you're going to be engaged, which is usually a yes, no, but it's sort of a notice of we expect you to be engaged. Um, if you all want to pick one and then just stick with it tonight, I think that'll make it go faster. So tell me which one you want. Who wants to kick us off with what motivates you to apply? I'll be happy to start, Mayor. Thank you. 
How about the second one? I'll take it. All right. Thank you, Member Anderson. Next one. I am will take number three. Thank you, Member Russell. Number four. Wink will take it. Wink. <laughs> number five. I'll take five. All right. So I'll take okay. six. And then we will give the seventh one to Member Cuesta. I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, then the second thing is that we have a list of the alternates. Um, and what I thought we would do tonight is uh, at, the, at the end of all of the interviews, we will talk about the alternates and then go through the list and as best as possible, come up with some sort of consensus of what we think who should fill in what lines and then um, that'll be brought forward to a regular meeting where we certainly can change that can contest that whatever you want to do um, we're not voting tonight we're simply setting up a possible schedule uh, or a possible list of people does that make sense to you all to do it that way i think it's how we've done it somewhat in the past it's always just a tad different but that makes sense Now I can't find the questions. Where, where was that at? Was that attached was, to the email? It was in the original documents that we got on Thursday. Okay. And so she didn't resend it today. Okay, that's the third thing I meant to mention is today we did um, have someone drop out and then we put a person in that you'll notice um, that you'll, you might uh, recognize his name, Colin Haggerty. He applied in January and we uh, were oh. saving him for this. I think I think Stone's wanting to know where the questions are. I found it. I found it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody else have the questions? It was in that first document, back in. It was uh, sent on the sixth or on the fourth. Fourth. Yeah. She's yep. Jackie sent it on the fourth. Yep. Sorry to cut you off, Linda. You were saying about Colin Haggerty. Yeah, I was just, sorry, giving him time to, Member Stone, to look for it. Um, Member Cuesta, we were just talking about a couple things. We're going to go through the list of questions with everyone taking the same question. And we already assigned you number seven, if you don't mind doing that one, okay. rather than rotating them, which is hard to remember who's got what and where, because every time a new person comes into the Zoom room, it's going to change your configuration, and I won't know who we're doing. Sure. Um, so each one of us took one. And then if you can introduce yourself, everybody, when you have your questions. So uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you'll start out after I've introduced or after I've just welcomed to the person and told them what, what the format is and how much time we have, then you can go ahead and start with that one. And we'll go through them all and, and allow them to ask Q&A at the end. Um, question on that. So, so what you're saying is that I just introduced myself prior to my question. So yes. each introduce themselves prior to their own question. Yes, if that's okay, that'll shorten it up a bit. So then the second question will be Member Anderson, you go ahead and introduce yourself and ask your question. The next one, Member Russell, you introduce yourself and ask the question. We'll just go through it like that. The nice thing about Zoom is they can see our names and our faces, so they know who we are by, by that. Then the, the second thing is uh, Member Cuesta, Colin Haggerty was substituted in at 710. I don't know if you saw the email later today, I did receive that. Thank you. Right. And we, if you, don't, if you remember, we did uh, meet him the last time around. So um, he was being put in for this one again. Okay. Uh, and then the third thing is that we're going to go through the alternates first at the end after all the interviews are over and then see if we have some consensus on where people might fit. I, one last thing I wanted to ask you, are you all okay if I ask and confirm with them during my question number six, which is regular attendance and engagement, um, that if we, if they're um, not getting their first, second, third choices, they really are okay with being placed in, you know, the fourth choice, because we have some who might put a fourth, fourth choice down and it's, and they've applied for one that nobody else has applied for. And I sure hope that they'd still be willing to do that one. I can see that in a couple of cases here. 
So Honestly. along the way, I'll just confirm with them. These are the ones. Uh, if I'm looking at this right, it feels like we actually don't have enough people in general, even if we give everybody pretty much their first choice, to be honest with you. And if we give one person the six things they chose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yes. Like I started working through the, the worksheet and I was like, oh, yeah. We need more applicants. <laughs> oh, and yes. And I had, sorry, I covered up my notes. One last thing is we agreed when we went through this, uh, our new plans for how we're doing this, that you cannot serve on two quasi-judicial boards. We kept that rule, but you could serve on one quasi-judicial board and another non-quasi-judicial board. So you can serve on more than one as long as it's not two quasi-judicials. Member Wink, you've got your hand up. Sorry, I just noticed that. Thanks, Linda, or Mayor. Um, Something that came up as I was studying this packet, um, the, the two-year minimum we have for residents in Englewood, um, is this council at all willing to review or reconsider that requirement? I mean, it's come up almost every time because typically there's someone who's had fewer than two years here. I am. Yeah. I, I think we're going to ask to add, have to add, yeah, I think we probably do need to reconsider that, but I need to ask our attorney for the evening. It has to go through a process, doesn't it, to change that? I think so, yeah. I, I, I believe it does, yes. Thank yeah. you, Okay. So yes and no at the same time. We can't maybe do anything tonight about it, but we No, we can't do anything tonight. We can have a conversation about it in the future and see if we want to make some some shifts because we do have, yep, you're right, which is why it makes it short tonight, especially. Okay, okay thank you. All right, are there any other questions? Yes. Ms. Storm, welcome tonight. Uh, Thank you. Hi there. We're going to ask people to keep their video off just until it's their time. You certainly can oh. be on and listen uh, okay. just for the time being while we're meeting. And then you're second in line, so you're going to be up soon. Uh, so just wait till 610. Yeah, just turn your video off until then is fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, Mayor? Yeah. Um, to go along with this, can you remind me again of the quasi-judicial groups? Yes. The so I can mark them. I know, you know, it would take, so planning and zoning. Um, water. Or, water and sewer board. Right. Um, and... Uh, Urban, urban adjustments, oh, BOA, mm -hmm. Board of Adjustments and Appeals, and Urban right. Urban Authority. Right. Okay, thank you. I think I got them all, Jackie. Right? Well, you all know too. I believe so because I didn't have Urban, so good catch. Yeah, that one. Right, good. Any other questions? So we're okay with everybody hearing everybody's interview. <laughs> yeah, well, you, they always have had the right to do that. And we've had times where people, you know, come and sit in the room while we're doing it. So it's okay. an open, open meeting. No trick questions anyway. It's their own <laughs> not, answer. Not really. <laughs> not like there's, a, there's a, an answer that they could get wrong. <laughs> it's really... <laughs> In some ways, this is a great meet and greet and finding out how people are motivated and what they're interested in. And it's all going to be personal for who they are. So that's true. Uh, we could get started. Yeah. Would you all like to do that? Because we posted it as a 545 meeting, but we might as well up a minute here if we want. <laughs> so our nurse, our first person up then, Helene, if you're if you're available, if you can turn your, yay, there you are again. <laughs> Welcome. You've heard our process here. We're Thank going to go know. through a list of um, seven questions here, each of us taking turns at that. 
and introduce ourselves along the way. And we'll hopefully have enough time at the, we, we will, we're gonna try and uh, have enough time. Member Quest, do you wanna keep track of my time too? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it too, but if you wanna interrupt me if I get distracted, I'd love it. Um, so we'll leave enough time for you to ask any questions at the end too. Kicking us off tonight is Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Good afternoon, Helene. Uh, this is Old Daniel Sierra, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Member for District 1. Uh, Helene, uh, what motivates you to apply for the Inglewood Board at this time? Well, I've always been really motivated to participate in my community and I actually just heard about the two-year rule and so my one-year anniversary is next month but uh, one of my top priorities was to find a way to participate. And the library board is ideal for me for so many reasons. Um, my, my current academic path supports that. My career right now supports that. And also I grew up in the library. My mom was a librarian. And it's just something that I think I'm well suited to participate with. I think it'll be really fun and I, I would love it and enjoy it. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Helene. Hi, Helene. Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. <laughs> um, thank you for applying. And the question I have is kind of just to elaborate on what you already said. What specific knowledge and skills and your, your background and experience um, make you particularly suited and a benefit to Inglewood on the Public Library Board? Um, I'm really happy to answer that question. I do have a lot of extensive experience that can be applied to this position. I work in technology and education and art, and I have an extensive background with early childhood development. I was a high school math and science teacher. Currently, I am working towards a graduate degree in learning technology. I just did a year at University of Colorado Denver, but I'm transferring to a Johns Hopkins program for a master's in science in learning technology. In my career, I've worked as a media producer and I've produced educational products such as online museums, and remote learning opportunities. And currently right now, I am an instructional designer and e-learning developer. And I work with Fortune 500 companies producing really cutting edge, sometimes VR and AR programming. And I think that the library of the future is going to have all of that. In fact, actually libraries today have quite a bit of that. And I'm pretty passionate about bringing that technology and working with it in a community way, because for a long time, it's just been not as accessible at the community level, but the thought of being able to work at the community level, doing what I love. Yeah. Is Good job, Mara. Thank you, Mara. Um, Jackie, you need to mute yourself. Or someone does. <laughs> Keep going, sorry about that. Um, that's it. Yeah, I've been doing this for my whole career and I would love to be part of a board where we have goals and some of these groundbreaking ideas could be implemented. Um, I'm a creative thinker and I just think there's a lot of opportunity for that, especially given our recent pand pandemic um, situation where technology is now more important and the move towards making accessibility remote is even more enthusiastically supported. So I think now is a great time um, for some of the skills I have to be implemented or utilized by the community. All right, thank you. Thank you, I'm gonna try again. Jackie, do you hear us? Jackie? Jackie? This is the fun of it, isn't it? <laughs> you, you might have the power to mute her, Mayor. I don't. I'm not oh. a joint. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody else is. But Jackie? Oh, well. Keep going. Who's our next person? Is it uh, Amber it's Russell? Me. Um, thank you. Good evening, Helene. Uh, I'm Rita Russell, council member at large. I thank you for applying, and it's great to have you here this evening. My question is, uh, could you share with us an experience in the past which you worked with a, in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives? Um, yes, I feel like that's, you know, most of the projects that I work on. I work in large teams and uh, I work remotely already. I was already a remote worker before this happened. 
And a lot of the people I work with are all yeah, so I work with teams in Costa Rica, in Spain, in Japan. And we communicate through um, remote avenues and work together on really large projects. So I would say that's a good example, current example. But also, I've worked at the community level throughout my whole adult life. And I think that the skills needed to overcome conflict and to work with people are used all the time when working as groups trying to accomplish um, any kind of agenda. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rita. Mm -hmm. Amber Wink is next. Hmm. Yes. Hi, Ellen. Uh, it's quite a European name, so I'm, I'm going to go with my gut and say Ellen. <laughs> Helene. Um, so thank you for applying to this position. Um, since you are, and you said some of this in your application, you're almost um, a resident for one year. Um, what do you love most about Englewood? Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to go with the honest answer. I would say it's the food. I think Inglewood has some of the best food in the greater Denver area. Um, but I also love so much the architecture. I, I love the architecture in Inglewood as well. And I'm looking for opportunities to get to know the people more. I work at home and I'm a first time homeowner and I'm not like mingling a lot right now. And so I think that I'll be able to say that the people are the best part when I'm actually mingling more and able to be more integrated in my community. But right now, the community bank is pretty awesome and there's some great tacos and, and everything. Inglewood's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. By the way, I think you already know I'm Cheryl Link. Thanks. Yes, thank you. So just to clarify, how do you say your first name? It's Helene, but um, Cheryl's correct. There's a lot of variations of it, and I always am happy to hear any of them. Great, thank you. Next is uh, Member Stone. Hey, Helene, good to see you again. Uh, my, I, I'm John uh, Stone, council member at large. Uh, and my question for you is, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding uh, the parks board? Or I'm sorry, the uh, library board, geez. <laughs> well, I would say that um, one thing that maybe could possibly happen is having some more space for technology to be able to be accessed by the community. There's a few things that I wrote down that are um, things that I think I would like to contribute to the library, but also I want to preface this by saying that I'd be interested to hear what the library has on its own agenda. So I'd be curious to like integrate my ideas with what's already on the agenda. But um, the three things that I outlined are increase accessibility for all users, including ADA web content accessibility guidelines and making more aspects of the library remotely accessible. Um, another thing that I think is a value of mine that could be applied to the library is to bridge the technology gap for our low-income community members, including students, by providing access to emerging technologies um, that could be VR uh, meeting room or a media production room or some space where there's technology that's available to be accessed that otherwise couldn't maybe be afforded by some families. And then last, um, foster community by keeping up-to-date resources for the community and by promoting community initiatives through the library. So making sure that it's integrated with other community initiatives as well. Awesome, thank you. That's great, thank you. Uh, hi, Helene, I'm Linda Olson. I uh, represent District 2 and also the mayor. And I have a really tough question. <laughs> it's about regular attendance. It's a, a regular attendance and engagement uh, with the board and commission is required. Do you foresee any obstacles to that? Um, are you able to attend the scheduled meetings as noted? Yes, I would be very committed if given the opportunity. Great. Thank you. And you applied just for a public library, right, in Rexford? That is correct. If there were openings on anything else, um, would you be willing to consider those? Or is that really the one you want? I would be willing to consider other openings. And I would also be willing to participate in multiple opportunities. I did think that the library was an especially good fit for me. Um, but I, one of my motivators for this is to be more involved in the community. So 
that can be achieved through participating in other areas as well. All right, thank you. Member Cuesta. Member Thank Cuesta, you. you're uh, muted. You bet. Thanks, guys. Uh, just to let the group know, we're at nine and a half minutes. And uh, good evening, Ms. Federici. My name is Dave Quest. I'm with District 4, and I'm actually on the library board now. I really appreciate all the forethought that you've already placed into your answers and in the areas of where we can get better. Um, my question for you is, how will your service on this board or commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen or pers uh, either personally or professionally? Well, I think that by... Be participating in my community, it would benefit me by being able to meet my neighbors and just be more involved. Um, professionally and personally, I think that it would benefit me to be able to exercise my skills and, and utilize them in a way that's different than what I do currently for my work. Um, I imagine that if any of these ideas or any ideas on the table already are implemented, it takes a great deal of problem solving and collaboration. And I think that any chance I get to do that always benefits me. Thank you. So do you have a question for us? Well, I do. I would like to know what are some of the library's current initiatives that maybe a community member might not be aware mm -hmm. of? Member Cuesta might be able to answer that best as he sits on that. You bet. Uh, digitizing a lot of old records is a huge component of it. It's something that they've been doing for a long time, and a lot of it is becoming uh, a matter of deterioration. Now, this speaks to things that have been in the archive for many, many years. It's maps, it's photos, uh, and so that's something that in many cases has to be done manually, and so I know that one just has an urgency just because there has been some degradation of, of some of the documents that they have. Uh, to more modern things, I think you've hit the nail on the head with technological access. Uh, even something as simple as web use. There's a lot of folks that just need to get online that don't have access uh, throughout their day to day. And so I think increasing the number of units they have. Uh, another one is increasing the number of children and after school programs we can have, teenagers in the library. And uh, you bring up a lot of good points is that a lot of kids are more accustomed to screens. That's certainly the case with my children. And so uh, making the attractive library to those folks and getting them in. So again, I think that you are very topical and relevant with the things that you've mentioned and you'd be a great fit. We'd certainly love to have you. Thank, Thank you, you. Do I have an opportunity for a few seconds to respond to that? We actually are late by two minutes, but you know what? Feel free to email me. And I will. Can... I will. I have some experience in that area and I'd like to share it. So thank you oh, all good. very much for taking the time. Thank you. And we will be in touch. Of course, we have to figure out this residency piece. We may have to have another conversation. Um, obviously, we'd need to have another conversation, but thank you so much for taking the time to apply and show up tonight in an in interview. Thank you all. Be well. Thank you. Our, our next person is uh, Ms. Sonia Strom. Thank you for being here. I know that we asked you to turn your video off for a minute. Um, are you able to turn it back on? There we go, sorry. I only do Zoom for yoga, so it's like new to me. -ish. <laughs> it's okay, it's, everybody's getting better at it maybe. <laughs> um, Mr. Oganowski, could you turn your video off while we interview other candidates and then turn it on sure. when it's your turn? You can listen in, no problem. It just makes it a little easier. I'll leave for right now and I'll come back. Thank you. Um, yeah, everybody's there. Ms. Strom, we're gonna go through a list of seven questions. Each one of us has a different one and hopefully we'll leave enough time at the end for you to ask us any questions, but we have 10 minutes. Uh, we'll try and stay on track with that. So I'm gonna sure, no start problem. with Mayor Pro Tem Sierra as first one up. Hello, Sonia. This is Othaniel Sierra, District 1 representative and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, my question for you is what motivates you to apply for the Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Well, I have lived in Arapahoe County my whole life, and I have owned a home in Denver for the last 28 years, and my kids are older, and I really like meeting people and being involved with the community. But you live in Englewood, right? Yes, I am in Englewood. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sonia. Um, thank you, Ms. Uh, Strom, for applying for this board. I'm uh, Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. And uh, my question is to just elaborate on that one a little bit. What knowledge, skills, or abilities do you bring specifically to um, the Code Enforcement Advisory Committee that you've applied for? 
and how do you hope to provide a positive benefit to Inglewood uh, through service on this board? Well, I've always liked Inglewood and how they really respected the people and it feels like a small community and it's very easy to get things done. And I am somebody who, I see myself as a very common sense, no nonsense person. And, but I also like to work with and listen to people. And I feel like there's a need for that. Yeah, and absolutely. I do my neighborhood watch meeting every year. I've helped out with that for the last 20 some years. And I know the biggest thing that's usually on a lot of my neighbor's mind is things about code enforcement. Um, what their neighbors are doing or what their neighbors want to do or how can you get something to change? So I know it's a lot of glue with the community helping everyone get along and seeing everything eye to eye. And I feel like I could work with that. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Member Russell. Good evening, Ms. Strom. It's great to have you. Um, I'm Rita Russell, council member at large. And my question for you is, could you describe an experience um, in the past during which you worked with a diverse um, and sometimes opposing views and perspectives um, in that group? Well, I really can't say that because I have just worked for myself for many years but I listened to people and my husband has his own business and we've just been very busy that way. But just even working with my neighbors to solve issues or problems or let the, just letting the law and the rules and everybody working with them together. Okay but I really don't have any personal experience, but I think I will be good at it because I usually like to listen and think about things before I speak. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hello, Ms. Strom, I'm Cheryl Wink. I'm a council member at large. Thank you for applying. My question is, uh, what do you like about Englewood? Well, I love all the different age groups of my neighbors. I love that I have super seniors, like people, 80 to 100 years old and they're still living in my community and I love the families and I like the diversity of it of all different types of people but I like the quirkiness of it for me Inglewood is to like to Denver is sort of like an Austin I love that we can have art music and people really enjoy that in our community that we don't have to try to be little Denver. Wonderful. We can Thank have you. a little bit of our own personality. That's Very what good. I enjoy. Anyway. Thank you. So regular attendance and engagement. Oh, I'm Linda Olson. I uh, represent District yes. 2 and also the mayor. Uh, but regular attendance and engagement with the commission, of course, is required. Um, will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings? Do you foresee any challenges in the next year or two with that? Um, I don't believe so because aren't they usually Wednesdays at five? I yes, I so. I work for myself so I can do my own scheduling. So okay. I am just fine with that. And you have signed up for uh, this one in particular. Are there are there others that you would take on if if uh, needed? Um, if needed, but since this is my first time ever applying to a board, I would want to see how it goes and okay. make sure that I don't bite off more than I could chew. Right. Thank you. Member question. All right, thank you very much for your time. One, one more, one more. <laughs> Mayor, you skip John. Go ahead, Member Cuesta. I believe Member Stone is up. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so what would you like, I'm sorry, I'm uh, Council Member Stone uh, at large, and what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? Well, 
I think have protecting the citizens is good, like against the um, construction companies that do a lot of dumping in the alleys. I know some of my neighbors have been so frustrated and have had to pay money to have concrete removed out of alleys and just making sure that people are, are fined for illegal dumping and that everyone's property is respected. Just right. that's like one of the biggest things I could think of in the last few years that was really frustrating to some of my neighbors. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, and I messed us up because I jumped ahead. So now it's member Cuesta. Thank you, Mayor. And we're at uh, seven minutes and 40 seconds for the group. And uh, thank you for joining us tonight, Ms. Strom. I appreciate your application. My name is Dave Cuesta and I'm with District 4. And my question is, how will your service on this border commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Um, I am just doing it for the community. I enjoy learning more things about my city and about my area and my neighbors. So for me, it will just be knowing that I am part of the community and I am helping with things that need to get done. Well, that's a great reason. Thank you, Ms. Strom. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I don't. I feel like it's, I'm not a big talker, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. But thanks right, for thank coming. You. We will um, be in touch with you in the next couple of weeks to let you know what, what happens next. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Our next person is um, Teresa or Reese Adams. Is she on? Yes, she is. Hello. Hi there, Reese. Good to meet you. Can you hear us okay? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, not sure if you heard everything, but we each are going to ask a question. We have seven of them. We have about 10 minutes to answer or to, to have this interaction, and hopefully we'll leave a minute or two at the end for you to ask us any questions if you have any. And so first up is uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Hello, Reese. This is old Daniel Sierra, District 1 representative and Mayor Pro Tem. Um, what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Board of Commission? I can't hear him. Are you able to hear me? Reese, are you able to hear me? Reese, if you no. need to turn, if you need to turn your video not. off to get the most of your bandwidth, go ahead and do that. It might help. I can't hear you, Linda. I just find me. Reese, are you able to hear me now? Can you repeat for me, please? Yes. Okay, perfect. So what motivates yes. you to apply for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Good question. Well, <clears throat> I went to Inglewood about two years ago. Um, during that process, it was uh, starting a job, planning a wedding, buying a house, and now, um, I'm at a position personally and professionally where I have the space and the, the time to be able to put forth to bring for this community, especially since I intend to stay here and put roots down. Thank you, Reese. I think you were breaking up a little bit there. So if you wouldn't mind just uh, turning off the video, we may be able to get a little bit more bandwidth. Yeah. Thank you so much. Member Anderson is next. Hi, uh, thanks for applying. Now, I, I, I have two different documents. One says you're applying for Cultural Arts Commission. The other says Urban Renewal Authority. So I just wanted to uh, ask Cultural, for- Yes, so the Cultural Arts Commission. Cultural Arts Commission. Okay, so what knowledge and skills or abilities do you bring to the, would you bring to the Cultural Arts Commission? And how would you like to benefit Inglewood positively through your service on that board? Yes, so, well, like I said, I'm fairly new to Inglewood, so I probably bring a certain level of naivete, but also um, I lived in Las Vegas for 12 years, 
And it's a community that, um, like Denver, is growing, but doesn't necessarily invest in their local um, neighborhood um, art scene, music scene. And so I kind of, I, you know, I, I got a sense of what was lacking there. And, you know, cultural arts is something that I love to do in my free time, to participate in my free time. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's just, it's just something that really is passionate, I'm passionate about. And I love um, the quirkiness of Englewood. And a lot of my, my uh, neighbors are actually artists. So I hope to, I hope to, um, kind of bring their um, artistic skills to the forefront. Great, thank you. Amber Russell. Good evening, Reese. Um, it's nice to have you. I'm Rita Russell, council member at large. Um, my question is, could you please describe for us an experience in the past uh, where you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives? Oh, certainly. Um, while I lived in Las Vegas, I was uh, on the HOA for 12 glorious years. And I don't know if anyone on this board has ever been on an HOA, but, um, you know, that was a very challenging time, um, especially during the recession where people were personally affected. So, um, you know, that was, you know, we went through construction defect issues. We went through people losing their homes. And then towards the back end, people started, um, you know, Vegas came back and they wanted a lot more out of us um, as a community. So, you know, we had a very uh, wide range of um, issues during those 12 years. So that was, uh, that was a fun time. Actually, that's a great example. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Member Wink. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Adams. I'm Cheryl Wink. I'm a council member at large. Um, I'm here to ask what you like the most about Englewood. Well, I guess it's kind of, you know, I've lived in a lot of different places and the thing I like most was, it was coming to Englewood and having an immediate sense of community. Um, get, I know a lot of the business owners. I know my neighbors. Um, my sister lives about a mile away from me, so I have family nearby. But there was an immediate sense of community that I hadn't felt in other cities that I've lived. That's a fantastic answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. Member Stone. Hi, I'm a uh, member Stone, council member at large. And my question for you is, uh, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the board uh, or commission that you applied for? Well, I think it was last year that I had an opportunity to meet a lot of local business owners and artists at Black Cube, which I thought was a really neat event. Um, but I think what it did is bring to the forefront a need for a larger um, artist community here in Inglewood. And for me, that might be something a little bit more concrete, um, literally and figuratively. Uh, sometimes you see like art, art corridors or art, um, you know, spaces that are devoted to local artists, whether it be pop-up or, um, you know, literal concrete buildings. But I think that a more um, visual presence for the local artists would be something that I would like to see um, take shape. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Reese. The, this is Linda Olson. I'm uh, District 2 and Mayor. And my question is, uh, regular attendance and engagement with the board or commission that you're assigned to is really required in order to make things work well in the city. Will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings? Do you see any challenges to that in the next year or two? I don't see any challenges to that. In fact, one of the reasons why I selected this particular community, although in addition to my interest, is that it fits um, my corporate life schedule um, in the evenings. So no, I don't see foresee any issues. All right, thank you. And if there were other boards or commissions that could use your service, would you be willing to look at those? Or is this um, the one that you want the most? 
Um, this is my, my first choice, but to be honest with you, I'm happy to serve in any capacity that's needed. Um, my corporate life is, is very much in um, numbers and finance and budgets and spreadsheets galore. So um, I tend to do, I tend to like to volunteer in ways that um, benefit my personal life a little bit more than what I do in my professional side. All right, thank you. Member Quest gets the last question. Uh, thank you, Mayor Olson, and we are at uh, just about eight minutes to the group. Uh, thank you for applying, Ms. Adams. I appreciate it. My name is Dave Cuesta, and I'm with District 4. Uh, and the question I have for you is, how will your service on this Border Commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Uh, good question. It's probably going to benefit me selfishly, mostly personally, because I'm look I want to get involved in the community to meet people but I own a home here. I have a vested interest in Englewood. I love it. And, um, you know, it's, I think you end up getting a lot more um, personally out of volunteer than I would professionally. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Great. And do you have any questions for us? Um, I guess, yeah, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with how the COVID crisis has shaped a lot of businesses um, and their strategy, but how has it shifted the priorities for especially, you know, these different committees that are um, volunteer-based and you know, directionally, how do you think that this is, this is changing things? Well, I think uh, just currently, the big thing has been moving them all onto electronic meetings or Zoom meetings. And I think that has allowed them to actually continue their work. There are some things, of course, you just can't do, um, like Keep Inglewood Beautiful, which is one of the other ones. You couldn't do some of the things that they have set up to do, which is very hands-on service in the community. But many of the boards and commissions have continued to do their work. I think one of the things that will change that over time is figuring out what our finances are and whether that changes some of the things each one of the groups can do regarding their area. I don't know if any of the other council members want to chime in on that. I was just going to add, it, it brought some expediency to some of the items that haven't really been discussed and, you know, just trying to leverage some of the work that some other cities have done. For example, the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, during their last meeting in May, uh, reviewed and also, I guess, uh, move forward to council, uh, closing off some streets to traffic, to through traffic in order to provide more pedestrian and cycling uh, roads, similar to something that Denver did. So they identified three, staff obviously put the information together and, and they brought up. I guess it just brought some additional items uh, up on the agenda or at least create a new agenda items in a sense. Great, thank you. Great, thank you for being here tonight and coming on, on a Zoom interview. I appreciate your, we all appreciate your willingness to serve. We will be in touch with you within the next week uh, to two weeks max on what the next step is. Okay, thank you all so much. Have a nice evening. Thanks, Reese. take care. Thank you. And our next up is Mr. Mark Oganowski. I hope I've said your name correctly. You have, Linda. <laughs> Hi there. So Hi there. you probably heard a little bit here, but we're going to each take turns at a different question. And uh, we're going to let, uh, hopefully we'll have a, a little minute at the end for you to ask us a question if you have one. But we are going to begin with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Hello, Mark. Thanks for making it tonight. Um, Othaniel Sierra, District 1 Representative and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? What motivates me the most is I'm just very, very interested in politics. I'm very, very interested in how this city, city operates because, like I said, I've spent quite a few years here. And just wanting to help people and serve with good people and be a part of a great organization. Perfect, Mark, thank you so much. Hi, Mark, uh, Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Thanks for applying. I see you've applied for several boards here on your application. Um, so thank you for your willingness to um, use, be used where, where you're needed most. But I just wanted to ask you, 
what particular skills or ability do you bring to any one of these boards that you applied for? And what, how do you hope to benefit Inglewood in a positive way through your service on these boards? Um, my skills that I bring is like, I bring organizational skills. I bring communication skills. I bring time management skills. I bring a background in financial management and also performance review. So I bring a lot of skills to the table. I bring also a medical background because I worked in medical for about 10 years. Very good. So I have a lot of different skills that I have. Thank you. And can I Before interject I... one other thing? Yes, please do. I was saying my other skills lie me as far as like I mean, my background with uh, communication. I mean, I've done Toastmasters International before for quite some, quite some time and earned many designations through that organization. So there's a lot of things I bring to the table and I mean, I couldn't explain them all in one minute. I mean, I'd have to have an hour and a half of your time. <laughs> all right, member Russell is next. Good evening, Mark. It's nice to have you here this evening. Um, my name is Rita Russell and I'm a council member at large. Uh, my question for you is, uh, can you please describe an experience in the past in which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives and how that might help you in serving on a board and commission? Could you repeat that, Rita? Yes. Could you please describe an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives? Okay. Well, that would go to my coaching background. I mean, I've been a baseball coach for a number of years. I've worked with a number of diverse athletes and coaches. We all have different philosophies and all that. But we work together and we manage conflict very, very easily. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Oganowski, I'm Cheryl Wink. I'm a council member at large. And I would like to ask you, um, what do you like about Englewood? What do I like about Englewood? Well, I could say that they have a very friendly police force. They also have a very strong library department, they have a very strong public works department, and they have a very strong reputation of being professional as far as who they stand for. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hi, Mr. Oganowski. My name is John Stone, and I am council member at large. I think it's my turn, isn't it? It is. Okay. All right. Uh, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you have applied for? The boards and commissions that I've applied for, the only thing I can say that needs to be improved is basically how things are perceived sometimes in the city manager's office. I mean, sometimes they have conflicting views, I would think, but I'm not saying that to be a bad thing. I'm saying that there has to be a more easier process to apply maybe and that would be my response to that okay thank you my question um mr Oganowski, i'm i'm linda olson i think you know me but i'm the represent district two and the mayor currently uh, regular attendance and engagement in the assigned board and commission is required and it's really important to make the the boards and commissions really function well Will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings or do you see any challenges in the future for that? No, not at all. I mean, I do coach baseball presently this summer, but I do have time for boards and commissions. I mean, those are slotted into my schedule automatically. Okay. So and I keep myself signed... very, very busy. I mean, and that's just the way I like it. So. Yeah, sometimes they say the busier person is, the more they commit to things. But I, I see that you've, you've mentioned quite a few boards and commission. Would you be willing to serve on more than one? 
Would you have? Yes, I would. Okay, that's helpful to know. Next question is member Questas. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Oganowski, for the application. How will your service on this Border Commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Well, benefit me both personally and professionally. I mean, personally, I love helping people. That's just the way I am. I'm a natural born people person. And professionally, I think it just looks good on my resume. But more than that, I did run for city council back in 2005, by the way. Yeah, that's what I remember your name from. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> I did not bring that all the way to the full, but I was going to say that I did run for District 4 against Wayne and lost, but I felt like I gave myself a, a name out there and I've wanted to do this for a long, long time and just continue to uh, grow my, my life and be happy here in Englewood. Well, sir, I appreciate your uh, desire to serve the city and thank you for the answer. Thanks, Mayor. Mark, do you have any questions for us? When do you guys uh, make decisions on these? We're going to talk a bit tonight after the end of all the interviews and then it will come as some kind of a general proposal to a regular meeting where we'll talk further on it and make our final decision. So, and I, I believe that is set for next week, isn't it, Jackie? A week from Monday, yeah. A week from Monday. Yes, yeah. A week from Monday. So the twin, uh, the 15th. Okay, do we have to be present for that meeting? No, no, and right now present means Zoom anyway, but yeah, no, we will notify you though, for sure. Okay, and I just wanna make sure you have my correct phone number. If it wasn't correct on your, um, application do let us know i don't want to repeat it over the zoom <laughs> okay well i'll give it to you all it's 720-641-1580 yeah it's correct on your application okay Mary, Thank can, you I ask, can i ask another question just i noticed that one of the boards that you applied for was the police pension board have you had experience with uh, pension boards? Yes, I have. Okay, and so that is something you would be interested in also. That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thanks so much, Mark, appreciate it. No problem, Linda, you have a great night. You too. Our next candidate up is Kara Fangipan, uh, Fangipane maybe, Frangipane, sorry, I didn't see the R. Is that correct? Is she here? I don't know. I'm right. sorry? I said Frangipane. Frangipane. Yeah, I should just let you say all the names. <laughs> so I don't a... see her on here. I've emailed her and I've called her. Okay. I was trying, and I know Monica was on just a little bit ago. She was, yeah. And I don't see and her on. Who is it that's connecting to audio with the wonderful dog? Monica. I don't know. That's Monica Johnson's dog. Oh. <laughs> oh, mine says uh, <laughs> Travis, Travis Ridley. Okay. Yeah, Travis Ridley. Travis. Travis, are you able to hear us? We could go on to his if he's willing. Well, Travis to isn't till later. Yeah, but we could just do him now because he's here and then do he... her. The girl. Oh, sorry, her. Sorry. sorry. I knew okay. Travis was female earlier. Travis, are you listening by yes. chance? She doesn't okay. have. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, and it, it, it's saying connecting to audio, so um, she may not be fully connected anyway. She might not have been ready just because she was going to jump on like 10 minutes before. Yeah. Um, Monica right. was on, and I don't see her. She was, yes. Um, well, we can take a little bit of a five minute break. Or just stay here waiting. We have another yeah, break. I can try to get a hold of her. Could you do that? That'd be great. I'll call one more time and then I will um, 
I've also emailed her. All right. That sounds so, great. Yep. There's Monica now. Monica, can you hear us? Yes. So would you be willing to go next? Because we have a candidate that hasn't been able to get on yet. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, we're going to ask uh, seven questions and we're all gonna take turns. You've been through this a bit before in your last time, uh, but we'll have about 10 minutes and hopefully leave a minute at the end of that time in order for you to ask us any questions. So first up is Mayor Pro Tem, Sierra. Hello, Monica, this is Nathaniel, and my dog is probably gonna bark here in a second. So uh, Mayor Pro Tem and District One representative, uh, what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood board or commission at this time? Um, same as last time. I just want to be involved, help out, find out more about how our town works. So I appreciate that, Monica. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, Monica. Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Thanks for applying again. Um, what uh, skills or abilities uh, do you bring to the boards and commissions that you've applied for? And how do you hope to be a benefit to Inglewood through your service on, on these boards? Um, well, uh, as far as the code enforcement committee, um, it's important to me that we have a, a safe community and a beautiful community. And um, I feel like I'm, I've only been to two meetings on this committee and I'm still like learning about uh, what they're doing and what the priorities are. Um, but um, my whole career is dealing with a wide variety of people. And I feel like um, once I figure out what my, you know, claim to stake is going to be on that committee and how I can help uh, move it forward, I feel pretty confident that I have the communication skills to do that. Very good, thank you. Member uh -huh. Russell's next. Thank you, good evening, Monica. Um, good to have you here this evening and I'm Rita Russell, council member at large. Um, so my question for you is, can you describe for us an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives and how that might help you on the boards and commissions? Sure. Um, well, uh, just recently, as many of you have had to do, um, we've had to uh, switch our learning platforms at where I work in a school. And um, we had to, um, we had to move in a different direction quickly, basically two weeks to figure out how we were going to do everything uh, that we do in person uh, from home. And so as you can imagine, um, there was a lot of information thrust at us and, and people had uh, very different ideas of what it would look like. Um, so those, some of those uh, meetings and, and the decision-making process could be difficult at times. Um, but what I learned was uh, that you need to keep an open mind and be flexible. And um, once we got going, everything kind of fell into place, probably much like it did for you when you had to deal with this whole COVID incident. By the way, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so similar, but in a, in a different type of community setting. Um, but in the end, um, I found that having an open mind and being willing to try something new um, was, a, was a great thing. So. Great answer. I appreciate that. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. Hey Monica, Cheryl Wink, um, at large city council member. Um, so what do you like about Englewood? Um, well, the number one thing is the people. Um, I love my neighborhood um, and I feel like this place is charming and has potential and that we need to modernize. So 
Um, I, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a comfortable, comfortable place to be and the people feel very genuine. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of change coming down the pike and we have to be ready for it. So I just want to be a part of that and make sure we're moving in the right direction in any way I can. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Amber Stone. Hi, Monica. Good to see you. Um, I am John Stone, council member at large. And my question for you is, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? Um, well, I think I'd like to, I'd like to see code enforcement tightened up everything with everything from how the alleys are maintained to registering pets. There's just so many small things that we can do. You know, the broken windows theory, if we keep up on it and make sure everybody's aware of what our policies are. And um, I, I really think it uh, changes the face of the whole community. So um, that's very interesting to me. I'm also interested in parks and rec because those are really important spaces. Um, and we have so many cute little pocket parks um, and making those accessible and, and usable for folks is um, important. I also think, that, and I think this is the transportation committee, but having bike lanes so kids can ride their bikes to school and people can get to the park more easily and slow, kind of slow down traffic a little bit would be great too, so. Awesome, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Monica, it's Linda Olson again, Mayor and District 2. And just to remind me, you are already on Code Enforcement Advisory Committee. That's the commission you said you've just been to a couple of times, right? Yeah, and then we've you're, had two meetings since I right. And then you've added in Parks and Recreation as the second one that you'd like to be on. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I'm kind of open. Um, so I, I'm happy to be on Code Enforcement. I originally wanted to be on Planning and Zoning because I think that's a pretty critical um, committee there. But um, you know. Honestly, I, I know that I can be on more than one if it's not quasi-judicial, and I'm happy to serve if there's a need. I would do the library board. I don't care. I just want to um, get involved and, you know, but I am more interested in keeping our open spaces clean and safe for the public and, like, just having standards in our community. So that's great. But wherever I'm needed, I will serve. Thank you. And, um as you know, involvement, regular involvement and attendance is really important for these commissions to work well. Uh, would you be able to attend meetings regularly and do you anticipate any changes or obstacles in the next year or two? Um, no, my, I don't have any obstacles. In fact, I have fewer obstacles because I'm not allowed to have as much contact with kids. So a lot, I coach a lot and some of my sports might be canceled and yeah. Yeah, so I think I might have yep. extra time. You know that world. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for what you're doing for our kids. Yeah. Uh, last question is from Member Cuesta. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And to the group, I've got us at eight minutes on this one. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, for replying. I appreciate it. And it's nice to hear from you again. Uh, my question is how will your service on this border commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Um, well, I think it would professionally benefit me just. Um, the experience, learning how these committees work, learning how our town works. That's great experience. Personally, um, it's fun to be in the know. It's nice to be able to talk to your neighbors, like, and actually have read something about the topic or, you know, I enjoy that. Um, and what I've realized um, through just being on the committee I'm on for such a short time is that People have some really wild and crazy ideas about why the city of Englewood does the things it does. So kind of um, having a more informed, um, you know, stance and being able to explain to people, to your neighbors, like, well, this is why we're doing this and here's the goal. It really is beneficial to me and everybody on my block. So that's all. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Thank you. Monica, do you have any questions for us? Um, how have you all been doing with this uh, remote meeting? I mean, 
what a shock. And I mean, perhaps it's more pleasant to meet on Zoom. I don't know. <laughs> there are some aspects of it that are very nice, just, you know, staying at home and doing the meeting and uh -huh. uh, driving to and from. But I have to admit, I am very, I am really proud of this council. We have worked really hard and have been on Zoom meetings from the very, very beginning. There are some councils in the area that have only met maybe three times or four times in the last two and a half months. And we've just been pushing hard and doing a lot of work. This group is really willing to work. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for being willing to serve more. Okay. All right. Well, good luck and uh, have, a, have a great summer. And I'm sure I'll hear from you. You will. Thanks, Monica. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. All right. No success to... getting a hold of Kara. Okay. I texted, emailed, and called. All right. Drevis is yeah, still... they're scheduled for a break at 7. Yeah, Drevis is still showing up. I wonder if she can hear us, or is that... Is she on the phone by chance, or...? I don't think she... Audio. She told me her son... Yeah. Her, her son was setting her up, so I don't know if she was going to be on early or not. Okay. All right. Let me just look up here real quick. Yeah, she's, she's just showing up as a non-video with... Uh, so it, it must be a phone call in, but she has no reason to be trying to listen in right now if she didn't want to. So we, we could um, take our break and um, be back at, how about if we're back at 7.05, just in case Colin comes early, would that be okay with everyone? Sounds good to me. Okay. That sounds good? Okay, let's take a break till then. Nine minute break. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody.
Hello, Colin. We're on break until about 7.05. So that's the reason why we're all on pause in the moment. Okay, I was uh, thinking that I was like, did I, I'm sure I plugged in something wrong or something like that. So no problem. Um, do you want me just to jump out for about five minutes so that way it doesn't throw it anybody... if, if you want to just keep the video off or something like that. Yeah, but we'll be back on in what, four minutes or so? Perfect, sounds good, thank you. Yep. Bye. Hello, everyone. It looks like we have Colin Hayerty 
on the Zoom. How are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you? I am well. I wasn't sure if you guys had anything else to cover before I jumped in. I know I wasn't scheduled till 710, so yeah, I'd so hang out for a minute. You know, it would be great if we could start with you because we've had a couple of people either have difficulties or not be able to come. And so we're ahead and we took an earlier break. So if you're ready to go, we are. Sounds great to me. Perfect. We have uh, seven questions, much like, like the last time. I think we saw you in, was it January or? I have, I have not actually officially interviewed yet, although you probably have seen me at certain meetings here and there. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. hopefully I'm a little bit of a familiar face, but I have not um, uh, had a chance. I tried to um, submit last time and was a couple days behind the, the March submittal. That's what it was. That's what it was. Thank you. And thank you for following up on that. That was really important. Um, yeah. So we have seven questions and each one of us is going to take one and we'll we'll do it in under hopefully 10 minutes and hopefully leave uh, within that time frame a, another minute, minute and a half for you to ask us a question if you if you have one. Great. So uh, Mayor Pro Tem is going to start out. Hello, Colin. Thank you very much for making it tonight. Uh, my question for you is what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Board Commission at this time? Yeah, I moved to Inglewood. Um, just over a year ago, a uh, year and a half ago at this point, and, you know, found a city that has uh, a, a lot of change going on with it, and uh, obviously a, uh, a council that's very um, active in trying to make it the best city for uh, the new people that have moved in or the people that have lived there, and I really want to do my part to be able to help that and, and lend my expertise to situations that might be able to help the city and, and help all of you folk um, do, do the tremendous job that you guys do. No, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Colin. Hi, Colin. I'm Joe Anderson, District 3 uh, Council Member. Um, so my question is, thank you again, thank you for applying. My question is, what particular skills and abilities do you bring to, I see you've you're, you're interested in applying for the Planning and Zoning Commission and possibly Water and Sewer Board. Uh, what skills and abilities would you bring to those boards? Uh, to strengthen them and also how would Inglewood benefit from your service on those boards? Yeah, the, um, great question and uh, definitely something I'm, I'm passionate about on both water and sewer or uh, planning commission, either one I think could could be a good fit for me and hopefully uh, for the city as well. Could you hold on just one second, Colin. Uh, Melissa, could you turn your sound off and your video off for us until until we have time? How do I do that? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm new to this. It's okay. It's down on the very far bottom. If you, There you go. You did it. You're okay. Colin, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. No problem. Um, so uh, I've been an engineer for uh, 18 years now. Uh, my background is in, in water, uh, mostly uh, flood control, um, shockingly. Uh, although hydrology, hydraulics, uh, open uh, channel work for the flood district or um, closed conduits, um, whether it be pressure pipes or, or sanitary sewer systems. Uh, professional, uh, so engineer for almost 20 years, been licensed for you know, uh, 14 of those years. So have a lot of great experience, um, work for uh, a great uh, company now that does um, water projects. And so water and sewer board, you know, fits right up my alley of, of things that I think I'd be able to lend my extra expertise to the city um, in planning and development. Um, you know, something I, I've done private development in my, in my past. I think I've got a, a good background, although um, I, I mostly do public works type projects uh, these days. Very good, thank you, Colin. Appreciate your application. Yeah. Amber Russell. Thank you, good evening, Colin. Um, my name is Rita Russell and I'm a council member at large. It's great to have you here this evening and thank you for taking time to apply. My question um, is please describe an experience in the past where you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives. Yeah. Um, you know, I am um, an engineer by trade, but I've uh, kind of rotated into a uh, project management position, which means I need to be able to take consensus from a lot of different groups and people and, and really achieve that, that best end, end goal, which might not be exactly what everybody wants. I mean, we can't, um, unfortunately, we can't provide the world to everybody. We need to be able to say, what is really the goal of our project and, and what is um, what is going to be the best for our constituents and, and for the public and, and really try to figure out then the best way to achieve that goal. And so 
um, as a project manager, um, you know, recently for a uh, project for the flood district, you know, we had um, the, the city of Thornton as well as Adams County, as well as um, neighboring communities, whether it be um, uh, single family homes, uh, a trailer park community, um, everybody wanted something that was a little bit different, uh, but we needed to come up with a consensus and 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 build a project that was was buildable, but also provided the end goal, which was you know removing uh, people from uh, flooding flooding risks. So, um, you know, I feel like I have a good experience of trying to listen to uh, what people are asking for and and really trying to dig down into what did they really need. Then at that point, it's um, a lot of people ask for a lot of things, but how can we get them what they really need? Great example. Thank you very much. Hello, Colin. This is um, Cheryl Link, at large council member. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, so, what do you like about Englewood? You know, um, I, I've I've really enjoyed Englewood. We've been here now for, like I said, just over a year, almost a year and a half now at this point. And um, the downtown, um, you know, Broadway district. We love to, you know, um, go down to, you know, either. Any, any of the uh, the bars down there are one barrel um, or uh, my daughter likes to go to the theater for kids there. She's been um, doing some programs there. Um, interestingly enough, my wife, when we first started dating, uh, I probably should know this off the head, uh, 12 years ago, lived in um, the Inglewood Towers right next to the station there. So um, it's someplace I've kind of always come back to, um, you know, the, the, the diversity of of people that live here too is is great you know i mean you get younger folks um older folks um people that have lived here for their whole lives and people that are coming here um coming here new and and really i think creating a good community it's a it's that small town thirty thousand person town feel that um you know i think really actually does make a difference excellent thank you so much thank you um Kara and Steve, we're glad to have you here and you can listen in. Could you turn your videos off just for now while we focus on the one who's being interviewed? That'd be great. Thank you. Member Stone, you're next. Hey, Colin. Uh, I am John Stone, City Council Member at Large. And my question for you is what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? You know, um, we're in a challenging time for um, our communities, uh, whether it being um, fees that are going up or, um, you know, um, services that are, are, are needing improvements, um, you know, on our water and sewer side, uh, we obviously have capital improvements that are, are, are going to be intense. Um, same with obviously on the stormwater side, there's a lot of improvements that, that need to be happen um, or that need to happen in order to kind of provide the safety that we need as a, as a community. Um, you know, for the, for this water sewer board, you know, trying to figure out what's really the best bang for our buck. How do, how do we, you know, get the most benefit out of the money that we're spending? And I'm not saying that we're not doing that now, but it's just something that I would, I would like to, you know, help be a part of how do we really maximize the dollars as, as far as they can possibly go and, um, and put in the right projects that are going to provide the, the best benefit. Um, and then the planning and zoning side, if, if that's um, what might be a better fit, um, is, you know, obviously the, the, the redevelopment possibilities with the downtown um, Civic Center area, uh, master plan, you know, incredible, you know, lifelong kind of a project that, you know, could, um, you know, really make a mark on the city as well as the region, um, for that matter, and the opportunity that's there, um, and how that gets shaped and how we you know, represent um, the city as well as an understanding that, you know, this is a developer that's going to um, come in and, and the needs that they're going to have um, versus the needs that the city needs to represent themselves at, I, I think, um, would be uh, on the, the plan and zoning side, I think what I'd be most interested in, in helping on. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Colin. This is Linda Olson. Again, thank you for being willing to apply. And I'm, uh, I represent District 2 where you live and am the mayor currently for the council. Regular meeting attendance and uh, engagement with the boards and commissions is required and of course is what makes these things work well. These groups need, need uh, attendance and engagement. Uh, will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings of the groups that you're interested in and, and do you see any challenges in the future at all? Well, I mean, the nice thing is we can just do this, right? I mean, I can sit in the basement and um, we just, this is all we do, right? <laughs> um, I do understand that, you know, eventually we're going to get back to normal and there will be on-site meetings. Um, I am in your district. Inglewood's not a huge place. I can get down there in minutes and I'm uh, more than uh, willing to commit to, to 
to being there and, and being a part of the committee. And you've applied for two. Uh, both of them are quasi-judicial boards, so you could only pick one, but would you right. be interested in any other boards and commissions that are not quasi-judicial? You know, I had the list. I um, honestly have not taken a very good look at it. I kind of got it a little earlier today. Um, I, uh, I forgot to follow up on this, and um, so I, I hadn't looked at any of these. Um, if there's is that just a general question or it is a general question we've just okay. been asking if there were others so you could serve on one quasi-judicial and one other boarding commission if you if you had another one in mind that you were interested in you know i honestly it, it, off the top of my head i don't have one that i've you know okay. found a um, significant um uh parallel you know with that i, I feel like I'd, I'd fit really well but i'm also happy to help in any way possible so when you guys get down to needing people um, I think if I'm here one day or two days, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do that, so. All right, thank you. The last question is to Member Cuesta. Thank you, Mayor, and to the group. We're nearing 10 minutes on uh, this interview, and thank you for the application, Mr. Haggerty, and, and for being here this evening. Uh, my question is, how will your service on this board or commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either professionally or personally? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I'll start personally. Um, Realistically, like I've said before, I, I want to make sure that we are getting the best possible systems for our, our city and for our constituents. And, you know, as a um, as a taxpayer, as somebody who pays their fees to the South Flat Water and Sand District, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, if I can help out in, in any of those side of things, um, you know, to make sure that we're getting the most efficient systems possible, then that's what I want to do as a individual um, taxpayer. As a um, professional engineer and, and within my work, you know, I um, there are a couple projects that interest me. Um, our company does have interest in, in other projects. I'm from my understanding, this wouldn't preclude our company or anything like that from me being a, a part of, of this board. Um, so I don't believe that there should be any issue professionally, but I um, also want to again be able to provide the best services that we that we can for the city if we're selected. Um, we are actually working for South Platte right now. Um, like I said, there are projects that we're interested in, in helping out with um, as a company. Um, and it's just something um, that I want to make sure that that we get done the right way. So that's that's really my emphasis for, for being on, on the board. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We may have time for just a quick question if you have one. Um, I guess um, it, they're, they're both quasi uh, juris, uh, judicial um, uh, boards, so I, I believe that means that they um, can make decisions in, independent of the council. Or do they guide you? Um, how do those how do those decisions make once once we once one of the boards makes a decision? Yes, they they do make decisions independent of us and make uh, referrals to us that we can then turn down or. Okay. And they also can um, try some things outside of the council. So water and sewer board I sit on and we have had to take some things up and we make the decisions. And if, they, if they're not satisfied, it goes to the courts from there rather than to council. So there's different features of each one of them. Okay. And Colin, you've lived in the city for a little more than a year, year and a half. Yeah. Okay. We do have a policy of two years uh, as a minimum, okay. but we are, uh, we're not sure, we're, we're gonna have to reconsider that as we think through the candidates that came through this time as well. So um, we will be in touch with you in the next week or two at the max and hopefully give you some idea how you can serve in the future. Awesome, and um, again, I do appreciate all the work that you guys all do. I know it's not always um, the most glorious thing in the world. I'm sure people don't always express it, but thank you. For, for your guys' efforts, so I appreciate it. Well, thank you, and thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Have a good thank night. You. I think that we have uh, Kara on now. Kara, are you able to unmute and get your video up? Because we missed you earlier. I think we, because uh, Raphael is not on right now, right? Raphael is on. Raphael is on. Maybe we need to go ahead with him then, and then if Kara doesn't mind waiting uh, until the end, I guess it's probably what we need to do. That's that fine. right. No problem. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Raphael, let's go ahead. We might, we might squeeze you in Kara if someone else is not on. Um, so Raphael, can you un... Hi. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> I'm not sure how it works, so I'm here. Then yeah, turn... great to see you. It's kind of like in the way. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. 
all of us have had halos in the course of the sun going down tonight, so. <laughs> yeah, but the living room is pretty dark, so it's hard to like get some sunlight in there. <laughs> That's all right, we can see you and hear you well. We have seven questions we're gonna ask you tonight. Each one of us is gonna ask you a different one and introduce ourselves as we do that. Hopefully okay. we'll have a little bit of time for you to answer a question or ask any questions of us before 10 minutes. Okay. So first person up is Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, Raphael. Thank you very much for making it tonight. Uh, I'm Nathaniel Sierra, District 1 representative and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, my question for you is what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood board or commission at this time? So what motivated me is um, so I moved in Inglewood a little bit more than eight months ago. And uh, I'm from France originally. And um, I, got, uh, I had like tr troubles recycling because I couldn't find any, my apartment building doesn't have any. And I had to find, you know, like, like asking people on next door to like bring my recycling or find out ways to do it because everything was closed. And it kind of started like this. I was like, it's not possible that in 2020 in the city like Englewood, I am still struggling recycling. <laughs> so it's kind of started like this, you know, it was like, because I really care about it. So I was like, you know, maybe I should get involved in like the more like council process, know how it works, know, because it's very different obviously than Europe. So it's kind of how it started for me, being involved and being able to make a change for stuff uh, like on everyday life, but to me are still like kind of not acceptable in a way. No, that's a great reason. Thank you very much for that. Next is Member Anderson. Hi, Raphael. My name is Joe Anderson. I'm District 3 Council Member. Thank you for applying. Um, I see you've applied for Keeping Wood Beautiful. What particular skills and abilities do you bring to uh, that particular um, commission that you think would be a benefit to it? And how would Inglewood benefit from your service? Okay. Well, I have a very, um, how would you say that, broad background. Because obviously, like I mean, I traveled a lot. I'm from somewhere else. I'm really, I love the environment. I love green spaces. I love history. And to me, I'm very curious. I like, I bike around in Inglewood so much because I like to like discover, you know, every like, secret places of it and I do I mean maybe it's gonna sound weird but I do really care about where I live like I feel like attached to it and uh, like I am attached to in my relationships like to my animals to like my family and like I really care about what surrounds me and I really have to have a positive impact and um, to give you like a little bit of a background I've, I have a law undergraduate I've volunteered in criminal justice I have traveled around I have seen the world and I feel like I have a lot, I obviously I've been in Europe and I know how it works back there. And I can, I think that I can, for recycling, for example, I can actually bring my knowledge to you guys too, because for this particular subject, I think like France is actually way more advanced than USA is right now. And I feel for like, I lived in Scotland as well. So I feel like I have like a pretty broad, you know, knowledge of what's done overseas or over places in USA as well. And I feel like this could be beneficial for Englewood because we can actually use what's been done somewhere else here and see what works, what doesn't. And uh, yeah, I just, yeah, pretty much with what I would Very bring good. to you. Thank you. Yeah, Emma yeah. Russell is next. Hi, Raphael. It's nice to have you this evening. Um, okay. My question for you is, can you describe an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing point, opposing views and perspectives. Yeah, so um, like I said, um, two years ago, I was living in, a, in Englewood as well. And then I came back, you know, in France, but um, because I have a, an undergraduate law degree, I went and volunteered with the um, association AVP, which is Alternatives for Violence Project. So I volunteered in a men's prison in Golden, which is called, um, uh, Camp George West and I've been so like it was workshops like three days for three months and uh, so I've been in a room for like three days in a row with uh, inmates and men's inmates which have very different background as I do or stories as I do because I'm obviously a white European wealthy you know woman and those guys are mostly black from poor communities and with very different you know life stories than as I had and uh, but at the end of the day the way we shared, because it was the purpose of the workshop was about uh, communication and nonviolence. And it was a very in-depth, are you guys here? Sorry, I feel like. Yes. Okay, you were all frozen. So I was like, I don't know if you're still here. <laughs> we are, you're okay. hearing you fine. 
Okay, so and uh, the way we actually like talk to each other and they're having their views, having my views on like, you know, violence, what kind of like violence is a very broad subject. We can have like, you know, the physical violence, the mental violence. And out of this workshop, I learned so much about myself and I learned so much about those guys. And actually some of them are still my friends today, now that they got out of prison. And um, so yeah, that was, it was, honestly, it was probably one of the most beautiful experiences in my whole life and I highly recommend it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Raphael, I'm uh, Cheryl Wink. I'm a council member uh, at large. Bienvenue à notre ville. Um, my question is, um, what do you like about Englewood? Um, so I've lived in Englewood pretty much every time I was in USA, which is, you know, kind of the way it happened for me. <laughs> and I really enjoy it because it's smaller, you know, like, because obviously I'm from France and everything is way smaller than in USA. So I kind of feel it like more like I have more my bearings in something smaller and I also I love the fact that there are so many green spaces I absolutely love that then we try like uh, the biking process um pathways or like more you know um sorry sometimes I, I miss my English <laughs> uh, it's very developed that's what I was saying mm. um I like the diversity you know I live in a building where there's like so many different kind of people. It's pretty like low income, but uh, I absolutely love that. And you can do like two streets beyond and you have like extremely beautiful houses, which I wish I can have someday. <laughs> but um, so I love this. I love, uh, I love the fact that it's yeah, kind of like a little bit outside of Denver, but it's still within the, um, the city as well. And I think that's important too, that it's like more local. And I also like the, like the connection within the neighbors. I'm part of the next door app. Okay. And I find actually like, like really great people through that app, you know, I garden for like a lady sometimes I like, go help her, I clean her house sometimes. Like, I do enjoy this kind of small community that we can create like easier links with each other. And also down, uh, for making like big changes, especially for me, what's important, like the environment, um, education, all of this or the subject that matters to me. And I think it's important to start local for like having actually big change coming up. I don't really believe in, you know, like states laws, federal laws, it's important, but I think if we do want change, it starts by little communities. And I do like that about Englewood. Great, thank you so much. Is it Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Member Stone. Hi, I'm John Stone. I'm a council member at large. And my question for you, which I think you might've already kind of answered, uh, is okay. what would you like to see improved in Englewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? Okay, so yeah, kind of, you know, that's how I started to get interested in it. So obviously the recycling part of it, because I'm still not completely sure, but I understand how it works. I've really looked in depth, but like, it seems like it's private companies, but the building is not, doesn't have to actually have one. Also the struggles, like people do not know about recycling. So I think a lot of things has to be with education of the citizens, because most of them, I know for my, my building, for instance, I think we had a recycle bin, but they took it off because people didn't do it, which, I mean, I get it, you know, it doesn't make sense. So I think working on the education about more environmental impact, I don't know if it, like, it's something we can actually work on in Englewood, but like remove all the plastic bags, for instance, which to me is insane, but you guys still have plastic bags, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> you know, like little things, like mostly like environmental little efforts that I can think about right now that we can actually improve. And um, yeah, it's pretty much overall, I think I really enjoy living in Englewood. It's pretty, you feel good in there. You feel safe overall. Cause you awesome. know, I'm, I'm, I, I bike by myself. I walk by myself. I like, and I never felt really bothered or anything. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. I would, yeah, I would probably mostly focus on, on uh, the environment. Thank you so much. And I, I never, I've never been able to go to Europe, but I did spend about a month in South Korea. And the mm -hmm. difference in recycling between South Korea and the U.S. is kind of mind blowing. Um, oh, yeah, it, was, it, is, it is really mind blowing. <laughs> the trash cans were about one tenth the size of the recycling bins in South Korea. So yeah. just to give an idea of how much recycling they do. So I, I think it's important too. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you for um, interviewing. I'm Linda Olson, as I said earlier, and I'm the District 2 representative. So your district, actually, I think I represent and uh, I'm the mayor for the council right now. 
Okay. Uh, I just have a quick, an easy question of regular attendance and engagement in the commissions is really important for them to work well. Um, will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings at the allotted times? And uh, do you see any problems in the future of being able to attend frequently and engaged? No, I don't because uh, I, I don't work in USA yet because I still do not have a green card because immigration, that's another subject, immigration, but it's not just Englewood, you know, it's USA overall. But um, so I'm still waiting for my green card, so I do not have the right to work. This is why I'm trying to take this year, you know, to volunteer and try to find, to build over skills and build over knowledge that I can just not have a year wasted because it's pretty hard mentally to be somewhere and not have any right to do anything. <laughs> so that's kind of what I was, uh, so I do have a lot of free time, which makes me, you know, a good candidate for being able to participate in meetings. I have a car, I have a bike, I'm in good health, so I can walk, I can, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> thank you, Member Cuesta. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for applying, Ms. Douche. Uh, my question is, how will your service on this Border Commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Well, personally, it's because I do attach a lot of importance, like I said, to my community and to ensure that the place I live in is still like somewhere where people are respected, somewhere where people have opportunities, somewhere where the environment is still like respected. So I do want to actually have an impact at this level. And on a professional level, I still, I mean, like I said, I don't have, a, I'm a graphic designer and I also have a law, grad, a law degree from Europe, which is not recognized in US, but that's another subject. And um, so I don't really know what is my career is gonna be because I'm still, you know, in a working process. But I think anyway, like being involved in a council or learning about politics is anyway going to help my law degree and bringing me experience, hands-on experience. And who knows what I'm going to do, but that's the beauty of life. <laughs> I feel like, you know, um, to me, I see it as an open door that is, I'm able to participate and bring my knowledge that I already have from like my very um, diverse life. And also um, have your experience guys to like help me build my own professional experience. Very good. Thank you for the background. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Sorry, my was muted. Can you hear me? I just saw yeah. myself go out. Um, um, Member Cuesta, what time are we at? 11.30. Uh, oh, okay. 11 minutes, well, 30 seconds. We're, we're going to probably have to end it there, but if you would like to and send any emails to us asking questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for being so willing. Yeah, thank you for having me tonight. Have a thank good night. You. Bye -bye. All right, take care. Bye bye. Ciao. Our next person is uh, Mr. Steve Paul, and I think I see you there. If you can unmute and you can, yeah, there you go. Welcome. Thank you for hanging in here with us. So you've kind of been hearing the drill here. We've got seven questions. We're gonna go through one by one. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem's gonna start with us. Great, can you hear me okay? Yeah. We okay, great, fantastic. Yeah, good evening, Steve. Uh, this is Othaniel Sierra, Mayor Pro Tem and City Council member for District One. Thank you very much for interviewing tonight. Uh, my question for you is what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Okay, well, um, I love small businesses and I love raising people up, lifting people up. As business owner, uh, most of my life, um, I get a lot of satisfaction from mentoring and encouraging uh, people in that kind of scenario. And in looking over, um, you know, what the, uh, um, you know, the ACE uh, Commission does, it just looks like it's something that would really be right up my alley. Um, and, you know, that aspect of uh, facilitating, you know, that communication and, and um, I, I really, really thrive on, on that kind of thing. No, that's great. Thank you very much, Steve. You're welcome. Hi, Steve. Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Good to see you again. Uh, thank you for applying for, uh, for, the, for ACE. And the question I have for you is, what skills and abilities do you bring to, would you bring to this commission? And how would you hope to be a uh, benefit to the city of Inglewood through service on the ACE Commission? Um, so I've, uh, as a 25 year business owner, um, you go through a lot of different things. Um, 
it's exciting. Uh, at the same time, you're faced with a lot of different situations. The buck stops here. Um, you learn a lot. I've learned a lot about leadership and negotiating with other businesses. And I'm a big believer in playing to your strengths. If you were to look at my, um, uh, there's a Clifton 34 Strengths Finder. Uh, things, positivity, uh, team building. Um, I'm an activator, which is means, uh, you know, uh, bringing ideas to life, uh, those kinds of things. And I think um, in so many different situations, whether it's been business to business, business and team members, employees, um, working with a lot of HOA communities over the years, uh, there's been so many different ways that I've facilitated a number of different scenarios. And I think that I can sit in even in some volatile situations and stay calm, help people come to agreement on some things, listen uh, and hear what some of the needs are and be able to bring them back to the city council or, or to the commission um, and, and, uh, and communicate that effectively. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, um, Steve. My name is Rita Russell. I'm a council member at large. And you already started to touch on my question a little bit. My question is, can you drop, describe an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing viewpoints and perspectives? Um, gosh, so many times. And um, I would say that um, one situation that happened a number of different times would be at an HOA and um, they needed to make some capital improvements. And as it turned out, it was gonna to have to be um, a special assessment. And uh, so as the project moved forward to getting closer and closer to you know, possibly having a vote in the community, um, it came up, uh, it was like, two very divergent um, different sides and it really you know special assessments bring people out <laughs> and um, so being able to help the HOA who was our customer and technically all the homeowners whether they were for it or against it they were technically my customer as well and helping both sides to see what the problems were and what possible solutions there are. And um, so that's something I've dealt with um, a number of different times. Great, great example. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Paul, I'm Cheryl Link. I'm a city council member at large. Thank you Hi, for Cheryl. submitting your application. Hello. Um, so I would like to ask you, what do you like about Englewood? Um, this is really uh, a, um, a surprising answer that I have, and it's, we moved here uh, because my youngest son lives in Englewood, and um, he's got two daughters, and we wanted to be close to them because we were way southeast, um, almost to Parker, and uh, it was a long drive for them to come and see us, so we didn't get to see them near as often, and so we moved, I'm literally walking distance from them. And we've been here about a year now, and I just had no idea, no idea how much I would like it. Um, walking to see my granddaughters, a walk to some of the stores up on Broadway. Um, and I heard someone else mention small town feel before. I mean, it really, I had no idea that you could have a small town feel in the middle of this metropolis, you know, and, and uh, uh, it's been really cool getting to, you know, see some of the neighbors and, uh, you know, just talk to people. Um, and so, you know, it is a motivation of mine to, um, you know, just to become a little bit more connected in the community, um, which is uh, a much more of a micro kind of connectivity as opposed to what I did before, because I was, you know, I was way out in the suburbs. Well, I was on acreage way out and you didn't feel connected really to anybody. And where I was connected was across the whole Metro and front range with my business spread out. So this, I don't know, this is 
I, I like this idea of getting connected to a, a small community. That's a great answer. This is good to know. Uh, I'm glad you're down the street from the granddaughters. Thank you. <laughs> it's so much fun. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Member Stone. Hey, Steve. Yeah. I'm John Stone. I'm, uh, oh, John, John Stone, if I may interrupt, or, or Member yeah. Stone, pardon me, we're at eight minutes to the group. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm John Stone. I'm council member at large. And my question for you is, uh, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? Well, that's an interesting question because I don't know what needs to be improved or what doesn't need to be improved. I remember from Joe's campaign that he felt like um, a spirit of cooperativeness would be a good thing. But I don't, I, I what I'm, what, what I see is, is simply uh, that I, I think I can help facilitate some, or bring some value in the uh, relationships between businesses and their needs and the uh, city council and, and, and back. I, I think I can be a positive force there. So I don't know that anything needs improvement or not. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm Linda Olson. I am represent District 2 and I'm the mayor for the council right now. Um, my question is regular attendance and engagement with the board and commission is really important for them to work, fun, uh, work well. Would you be able to attend the meetings for ACE on a regular basis? Do you see any challenges in the future for them? Um, I, I would be able to do that. I would make that commitment. Yes. It, let me ask you a question. Is your um, business registered in the city of Englewood or is it a part of a larger... No. The business that I was in uh, for 25 years, I wound it down at the end of um, 2018. Um, and that was a multi-million dollar a year construction services business. And right now I'm just doing some freelance uh, consulting and I did, uh, I'm registered as a, uh, so I'm, I'm just working out of my home right now. And I um, also am a general contractor and uh, I have not registered a business it's registered with the state of Colorado. I've not registered with the uh, uh, city of Englewood. Uh, my project, a project that I just completed was over in um, Centennial um, uh, okay. for the South Metro Denver Realtor Association uh, on some tenant improvement for their building. It's, it's only 25 bucks to register, so. <laughs> okay, I, I, would, I will do that. And, um, just, just wanting to know, and I, I'm not sure what all the rules are for ACE. So yeah, just well, no, it, 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 it totally makes sense. Uh, the truth is, um, I've kind of been in transition. You know, I ran a large business for 25 years, and I, I did some work for a nonprofit last year, and um, not 100% sure where I, what direction I want to take. Yeah, that's fine. I, I only ask that because I, we may find out. I don't know what all the rules are for ACE involvement, to be honest, and so we'll have to check that out. Sure. Uh, but member okay. Quest uh, might have a last question, unless we're at the... Uh, we, we're, we're past 10, unless you, I can just continue, or would you like me to proceed? Uh, why don't you go ahead and maybe we just, Steve, if you can answer this one a little bit. You bet. Well, uh, thank you for your uh, time this evening, Mr. Paul, and your application. My name is Dave Quest. I'm with District 4. And my question is, how will your service on the Sport Commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Um, well, I guess... Um, it would benefit me to get to know people. I mean, you know, networking um, is always a good thing, whether it's personally or, or professionally. So that, you know, that would be a benefit. Um, I don't have my eye on any construction projects or anything like that. Um, uh, haven't even haven't even looked at that. But that that would be the the biggest thing is getting to know people in the community and um, and and networking. And perhaps with networking, there there could be some sort of opportunities, but I really, that would be the most, that's kind of what it would be, I guess. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you all. You. Thank, Thank you. you uh, Mr. Paul, and we'll be in touch in the next uh, two weeks for sure. Very good. Thank you for service. Yeah. Thank you. So I think our next person is not yet on. Andy, it doesn't look I, like. I have called and emailed him, Mayor. I, so I don't know if you want to jump with Cara or just go on to Drevis? Yeah, I, I think we, sh is Drevis here? It looks like she did get on with video. Yes, yes she's got her mic on, yes. Yeah, okay, I'm here. Let's, let's do that and then hopefully we'll do Cara after that. <laughs> okay. So since she's here, I know she's been here for a while at least. Go ahead. Um, 
I, yeah, oh, I see. We don't really see you. Are you supposed to? I don't know how to change that. Start um, video, maybe. There we go. There you go. Um, <laughs> you, did it. you did it pretty quickly. Great. Thanks for hanging on here with us. Um, yeah. Seven questions, and each one of the council members will ask one, introduce okay. themselves, and hopefully we'll have a minute at the end for you to ask a question. We're trying to keep it under 10. It might go over a little bit, but we'll be close. <laughs> that so, sounds good. Mayor Pro Tem is first. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Travis. This is Othaniel Sierra, uh, Council One District Member and Mayor Pro Tem. My question for you is, what, motiva what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Board of Commission at this time? Um, actually, it's been uh, my whole family history. My dad was uh, president of the Colorado Federation of Teachers. So I was raised in a family deeply involved in politics. Um, and so it's just always been taught. And so it's not just at this time. I've served on the um, uh, Medical Marijuana and Alcohol Board and I serve currently on the ACE Board. I don't know how helpful I am to them, but it has probably been one of, one of the most educational boards I've ever been on. So it's just a continuation for me. Well, thank you very much for that, and thank you very much for your service. Hi, Travis. Uh, my name's Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Thank you yes. for applying and serving on a, currently serving on the ACE Board. Uh, what particular skills, ability, knowledge do you bring to the table for the boards that you've applied for, and, and in particular, how would Inglewood benefit from your service on these boards? Um, I would say probably uh, the number one thing I bring is my small business background. So I'm familiar with uh, the inner workings of owning a small business. I've worked for larger businesses. Um, I'm very familiar with books, <laughs> going through people's books and, and doing accounting services, not because I was trained in that, just because that job fell to me under a number of, uh, of my clients. They needed help with that, so I did that. Um, that and my willingness I'm, I'm always willing to serve where it is best needed. And if I can't do it, I'll be honest. I'll say I can't do this. So that's it. Thank you, Member Russell. Good evening, Drevis. It's good to see you again. And you as well. <laughs> thank you for applying. My question for you is, uh, could you describe for us an experience in the past during which you worked in a group uh, of people with diverse and opposing views and perspectives? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I have a number of clients that are um, on some of the upper echelon of Colorado politics. And uh, it was not too long, maybe two years ago, where I actually catered their lunch in and um, they all knew me from the past. I'd worked for them in one capacity or another, but there was everybody from a different viewpoint. And uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting, but there were no arguments. Everybody allowed everyone to speak. And uh, I felt good about it in the end. I was the, I was the lone voice on a little more conservative end, surprisingly, uh, but that was okay. That was, it worked out fine. I actually had applied to be appointed to the board um, for the state of Colorado working with the oil and gas industry, the liaison between the state and the state legislature and the oil and gas industry because of my background, which is I have a geology degree and I had worked on oil rigs. So it, it was one of those things where I thought I could be helpful in some way. All right, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Ridley, I'm Cheryl Wink, um, council member at large. Thank you. Yes, we met several times. Yes, your face is definitely familiar. Sort of familiar. <laughs> um, so my question to you this evening is, what do you like about Englewood? Thank you. Uh, having been born and raised in Denver, in Park Hill, um, what I find about Englewood, and I'm in, I live right down the street from Dave. I was like, I should go up and be on Dave's camera with him. <laughs> Um, I think it's the small town feel. Yeah. Denver used to have that when I was a kid growing up. We could walk to the zoo and walk to the museum. You weren't charged any fees. You could just wander around and participate, swim in the lake. 
at City Park. Um, I graduated from East High School. That grew fast and changed the dynamic, the whole shade of everything changed. And it's so crowded and bustling in Denver now that when I cross, coming down Logan, when I cross that border, I'm like glad to reach Inglewood. It just, it just, everything tampers down a little bit. You get a breath of fresh air. I have that same feeling as soon as I hit Yale from coming <laughs> back. Oh, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. You're welcome. Member Stone. Hi, I'm John Stone. I'm the uh, Inglewood City Council member at large, or one of them. Uh, and my question for you is, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you have applied for? Um, you know, I really liked being on the uh, medical mar marijuana and the alcohol uh, board. And, and what they did was an improvement, I think. They kind of eliminated some of the issues by having one person appointed to oversee that. I didn't know we needed it, but after they did it, I kind of thought, well, that was wise. So in working for the ACE board, what I've discovered is how really proactive Inglewood is at looking at the small issues for the business owners, because there's a lot of interesting business owners, especially in the industrialized area where you got to protect those guys. So I've seen as I drive up and down Windermere into Navajo that we've lost a few there and who knows why. Um, I would like to see Inglewood be a little more selective. I don't want to cut everybody out, but selective with some of the um, building arrangements with uh, building apartments. I am, I'm, I just, I want to keep that small town feel. So I'm a little protective with that, but I don't want to be against that because I understand it is considered progress. Uh, I, I, if you're looking from a dollar standpoint, it certainly helps with tax base. So, and I've seen some, I've wandered up and down um, north of uh, Dartmouth through some of the building projects there and they're actually really cute little homes. And the people who let me go in and wander through, I'm like, oh, this is really nice. <laughs> so I don't want to tamper that down. I just want us to be really selective and careful and not just, you know, shatter shot, whatever, scatter shot, um, tons of building projects, because we can only go up in Inglewood. And, and Denver was like that too, until they annexed for DIA, that they could only go up. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Travis, and I'm Linda Olson. I serve District 2 and as mayor for the council. Uh, and I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, well, first of all, regular attendance and engagement in all the commissions is really important for them to function well. Um, are you able to attend regularly scheduled meetings? Do you see any challenges for that in the future? Uh, in the past with the marijuana board, that was an evening meeting, which was no problem at all. We switched to ACE and ACE meets during the day. So uh, we just all voted with one another about who was available when and we're able to come up with a time and that's worked well so far. I just reset my schedule with whatever else I'm doing so that I'm available for that time. I think between both boards, I've only missed less than five times. So you, you are on ACE, but not on something else too, are you? No, just yeah. ACE right now. But yeah. in the past was uh, the alcohol, m marijuana and liquor licensing. Yeah. Liquor licensing, so yeah. in the, the two extra ones that you're, you're interested in either uh, budget advisory committee or the water sewer board, is that right? Right, right. I thought I have some, go ahead. Is there a preference on, on any of those? Actually, no. Okay, and would you be willing to serve on other boards if those didn't work out? I probably would, yes. I think I should keep that going. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Member you. Cresta. You bet. Good evening, Ms. Ridley. Uh, thank you for the application and the service in the past. It's appreciated. Uh, my question tonight is how will your service on this border commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? Uh, hmm. I don't think it will necessarily change anything for me professionally. Um, I'm not a, a shaker elbow, rubber, kind of, <laughs> that's not my personality. I like to serve. Uh, for me personally, it just keeps me informed. Certainly the ACE board, just Darren Hollingsworth, you guys just don't even know what a magician he is with the work he does. Phenomenal guy with his 
eye on everything. I just learned so much. So uh, other than personal advancement in my brain, I don't know beyond that. I just enjoy being a service. Very good. I appreciate the answer and I, I share your praise of Mr. Hollingsworth. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ridley. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank Do you, you have a question for us? Uh, my only question was where, where I would serve best and just let me know. All yeah, right. I, I trust you guys to, to take the time to consult and see where the need is most. And those two boards I was interested in. And if I, you know, don't get one now, I'll serve until whenever and, and apply again. So, well, thank you for what you're doing already and appreciate you're willing to step up for more. I keep telling all my friends, you guys need to apply. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think COVID knocked some of them out. They're a little too overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I ended up working more, not less. Go figure. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And we'll be in touch in the next week to two weeks for the most. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I, I think I see that Andy is on. And I think we could go ahead and bring you in, Andy, if you're, yeah, great. There Hi, you are. Sorry, we did a little flipping around there. I'm glad you're here. Sorry about that. It was in spam, so I couldn't find the, the invite. My apologies. No, that, it actually happened to a few of us. <laughs> <laughs> tonight as well. So Andy, um, the council is each going to ask one question. Great. We have some questions and then hopefully we'll have a minute for you to ask one of us if you need to or want Perfect. to. Um, and so yeah. yes, off is Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Yeah, good evening, Andy. Uh, oh, Daniel Sierra, I'm a District 1 representative and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, my question for you, Andy, is what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Sure. Um, I'm a relatively new citizen to Inglewood in the last uh, almost a year now. I moved in with my partner who moved out to Inglewood from Denver. Um, why I'm interested in serving really is twofold. Um, I am no longer self-employed, so I now work for the city and county of Denver in their campaign finance division, so I'm implementing campaign finance for the city of Denver. But not being a small business owner anymore, I feel like I've got a lot of good skill sets, but now I also have a lot more time to actually be able to serve and give back. And I've fallen absolutely in love with Inglewood since I've moved here. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me able to try to give back and make a positive impact. Well, that's a great reason. Thank you so much, Andy. Of course. Hey, Andy, Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Thank you for applying for the Boards and Commissions. My question is what, uh, what skills and abilities in particular do you bring to the Boards and Commissions you've applied for, which I, I see on the papers, <laughs> Public Library Board and uh, ACE, ACE as well. Um, sure. what, what skills and abilities do you bring to those and how would it, Inglewood benefit from your service on one of those boards? Sure, I'll, I'll touch to the Library Board first. Um, I'm a fundraiser for a living. So I love to fundraise. I've raised about $70 million for nonprofits and political organizations in my career. And I've got a big background in public education. So I've worked with a lot of hands-on uh, youth entrepreneurship programs, resource area for teaching, which supports teachers. So I'm a big believer in STEM and providing resources. So I feel like I could, I could benefit the, the library board both as a business owner, but then also to support in fundraising. Um, and, you know, across through their foundation and, and really sort of working with them to help them fundraise and, and raise money outside of uh, out of fees and services. And then in the business, you know, in sort of the commerce side, I've been a small business owner twice. Um, I am a entrepreneur at heart and I love to help small businesses succeed. Um, I'm a what's called a micro mentor for numerous small businesses through the, the um, incubator project, which aligns more seasoned business owners with just startups to provide them just advice and sounding boards and does this smell right? What does this look like? Um, and I'm just a believer in small business. So I think for me, I would add, um, you know, and, and it's, I've been named uh, one of the top 25 young business owners in the state by Cobiz Magazine and 40 Under 40 by DBJ. So I feel like I can bring some skill sets to it that maybe more entrepreneurial, maybe more small business focused. I haven't had a ton of um, work in more corporate environments. So sort of Fortune 500 and larger, but I've done a lot with small business and really helping folks find capital. So um, I also started a venture capital and firm that only works with LGBT businesses. So helping connect LGBT business owners with capital. So 
Um, I've sort of worked on both sides of, of the capital and trying to start a business and all the joys that come together with a startup. Very good, thank you, Andy. Good evening, Andy. I'm council member Russell. I'm council member at large. It's good to have you this evening and thank, thank you. you for applying. Um, my question is, please describe an experience in the past in which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing viewpoints and perspectives. Sure. Um, working in the political field, um, mostly my company did is worked with candidates and, and ballot measures. So we had to build a lot of, I would like to say, diverse and interesting coalitions of like-minded and quite frankly, not like-minded individuals many times. Um, I'm a big believer in being open, honest, and transparent. Um, I think everyone that meets me realizes there's really no gray area where I am. It's all black or white. I don't believe in tiptoeing around it. And I believe that really trust goes both ways. So you have to go out of your way to build trust with the community and with business owners and with, you know, working in politics. I've had the chance to work on the Democratic side, work on the independent side. I've, I've worked for some Republicans in the past. And so for me, it's about coming together and solving a solution because no party or no entity, regardless of political affiliation, has a monopoly on good ideas. And so I'm a big believer in being open and honest and transparent and bringing people to the table, not under false pretenses, because so many times we sort of like, oh yeah, we'll invite you, but we're not going to listen to you um, or listen to your viewpoints because it's predetermined. And I think you know, especially with, with commerce, there are so many different viewpoints in it, both from a structural way as well as a you know, philosophical way of running businesses. And I think it's important to ensure that businesses um, really do work for the community as a whole, provide employment, our ethical employers, as well as, you know, in the library community, it's such a critical access point for people. But I don't think a lot of people realize the impact libraries have on their community. And so I think it's about really a public education of the why would we fund anything community and really explaining the benefits of, of what they provide to the community. Great. I appreciate your answer. Thank you so much. Of course. Mr. Zuckers, this is Cheryl Wink. I'm council member at large. Good to see you this evening. My question is, um, what do you like about Englewood? You said earlier, uh, let me quote you, you moved here because your partner moved here and you have fallen absolutely in love with Englewood since moving here. So what has caused you to fall absolutely in love? I think it's, it's being new here. I grew up in a very small town, about 18,000 people and moving to Denver, I moved here in right about 05. So it was still a relatively small town and we've watched it just explode. Um, I really like that the fact that it's got somewhat of a main street. It's got a lot of small businesses and people just seem to be generally more focused on happiness here than in Denver. Um, in a lot of ways, I think it's much more community focused. I didn't know any of my neighbors in Capitol Hill where I lived. I didn't know a single one and I know my entire block because I've just walked around and said hello and, and talked to people and it seems a substantially friendlier community. Um, and I think it seems to me at least it's a much more community engaged community than a lot of Denver residents tend to be. Um, and so, and you know, we, we've got our local favorite, you know, bars and restaurants and we really like to support the community where we can. And I think it's definitely, it's a change moving from Denver where I lived for so long to come out here. And it was like, oh, Inglewood, it's, it's, it's just like Denver and it, it just isn't, which is, which I really like. You know, it has its pluses and minuses, I'm sure, for people, but I, I really like that it's, it's, it feels small towny, but yet still offers all the, the important pieces of a big municipality. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that answer. Hey, Andy, I'm John Stone, uh, council member at large. Um, and my question for you tonight is uh, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? Sure. Um, I think I touched a little bit on the public library side. I think really working with the community to understand it's not just books. <laughs> Most libraries are not just books anymore. They're community centers. 
in a lot of ways through resources for applications of jobs and STEM programming, after school programming. And so I think really I would like to see the community have a better understanding of the actual services that are offered from the library community. Um, and in the business community, I think talking to some business owners, there's still some, a lot of misunderstanding, quite frankly, of the resources and how resources fit with business owners. Um, and I think really, I'm a big, I'm a community educator in a lot of sense and I'm a trainer. I go out and train and teach people about politics. And I think really having some board members or committee members that can go out and explain some of the resources and help connect some of the great resources, both through Inglewood, but through the state, through the region, through grants, things like that to help draw businesses in. And then also I think the commission can be a resource for business owners to ask questions where they may be quite frightened to ask them of the city because it's, where do you start? I have no idea. It's like, if you have a question, we can help connect you or really form some mentorship programs. I think talking to some small business owners, you know, oh, we started. Okay, great. I don't know who to turn to about, I have accounting questions or marketing questions or quite frankly, zoning and those type of questions. So I think creating a bank of community volunteers willing to offer a community sort of input on things that may not have time to sit on a board or commission, but could answer questions of what's the best way? Should I do accrual accounting or not accrual accounting? Should I do a cash-based system? And I think those are those things that could really help businesses avoid the landmines of I had when I started up because I started up I had no idea what I was doing I filed my paperwork wrong I did everything wrong quite frankly and I've learned from my mistakes in a lot of ways and now now work for a city government so now I have time to help awesome thank you so much uh, mayor into the group we're at a little over nine minutes okay Andy um, I'm gonna ask you a quick question but first of all did uh, how long have you lived in Englewood so far uh, nine months okay we, we do have a two-year limit okay. right now, but we are still working on how we're going to handle that because a okay. lot of people have applied who are less than two years. Um, but I am going to ask uh, it, if you're able to make the meetings that uh, you have applied for, and do you see any challenges in the future for that? The only challenge I see with um, the, the evening meeting is not a problem. The only challenge I see working in the elections department, if the meetings fall right, right or before, right after a big election, I'll be busy, but I can still probably call in. But being a part of the elections team, if it's like the day after the presidential election, I may be a little exhausted. So, um, but I mean, I, I will I will move my schedule around to, to make them. All right, I'm gonna let member Cuesta ask a question and then I think we're gonna be done. I've gotta let my dog out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important thing. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, thank you for replying, Mr. Saketis. My name is Dave Cuesta, I'm with District 4. And my question is, how will your service on this border commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either professionally or personally? I mean, I think it benefits me to get me greater ingrained and connected to the community. Um, being I don't own a business, there's no conflict or financial interests in doing this. But I think for me, it, it helps me give back, but also helps me get ingrained myself in the community and learn substantially more about Inglewood that I don't know. Terrific. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Member Cuesta, do we have half a minute for a question? Sure. All right. Uh, Andy, if you have a question for us, we can answer one. <laughs> sure. No, no problem. Um, for the meetings, are they always in person or are they sometimes virtual in the land of COVID? Well, right now they're all virtual. We have okay. not had any face-to-face -face meetings okay. and we'll stay like this for a little bit more. Um, we'll probably be talking about that soon as a council. Sure, of course. Thank you. And we'll be in touch. Oh, Member Wink, did you have a question? Yeah, Mayor, I just wanted to, um, us to find out from uh, from Andy if he's willing to serve on boards beyond public library. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think he was ace in public library, and I do have to ask you if you own you don't own a business right now. I do not. Right, but you've got skills in that area. The public library board and others, would you be interested or willing to serve on others? Yeah, if you feel like my skill sets align with what you what you need as as a community, absolutely. Thank you, Member Wink, for reminding me that I was asking that along with this. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We will be making a decision in the next week or to two weeks. You'll be contacted by um, the office again. Thank you so much. And if there's coming. any other side questions, please let me know, happy to answer them. And, and same with you, if you wanna give us an email or anything, we're glad to answer anything. Perfect, and thank you all for your service. I know this is always a joy, especially in land of COVID. So thank you all for your service too. <laughs> thank you, take care, good night. Thanks.
Council, I wonder if you're willing to um, just keep moving through these last few and bring Kara back in because she's been waiting a bit. So we thought maybe we'd have a little bit of a break, but we're could we do a break after we're done with the next three? All bring right. Bring them on. We can bring do them on. A break at the end. Pardon? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll take a break at the exactly after this. Yeah, after after the everything break. else. After right. everything started. <laughs> so Kara or Kara, Kara, I'm not sure how you say your name. I don't know if you're still on and listening. I'm here. Hold on, it's a little slow. Sorry, if you if you need to keep it off to make it work, that's fine. Oh, now here we are. Sorry to make you wait. Um, I thought we would have a, a break somewhere in here to, to have you pull in, but we'll just do it now. No problem. All right, so I think you've heard the drill here a bit. <laughs> We're gonna ask several <laughs> questions. Been, uh, thinking about my answers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well help us. <laughs> Help us by being really succinct then. <laughs> All right, uh, first up is Mayor Pro Tem Sierra. Well, I was gonna say you may as well just go, but, uh, but <laughs> yeah, so Kara, um, Othaniel Sierra, District One Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem. And my question is what motivates you for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Uh, so my neighbor is uh, Monica Johnson and she is pretty active um, in the Inglewood politics space. Um, so she kind of convinced me to to apply, and here I am. So perfect. Thank you so much. Hi, Kara. Joe Anderson, District Three Council Member. Thank you for applying for the Public Library Board. And um, my question for you is: What skills or abilities do you bring to uh, the Board and Commission uh, that uh, that you've applied for, and how how would benefit Ingo would benefit from your service on this board? So I currently I work for a REIT. Um, we do mortgage securitizations. Um, I, I have a lot of professional background. I don't have much as far as um, any political background, um, but I, am, I feel very strongly about Englewood um, and where I live. We moved in about two years ago, um, bought in the neighborhood, and I just absolutely love it. And I want to be here for the long term. Um, and I just, I want to see Englewood um, sort of grow in a positive light and make it a desirable community for people to um, want to live and visit. Um, and I think, you know, I've got a lot of interpersonal skills, um, certainly a decent professional background. And I, I think a lot of it is interchangeable um, across many platforms, so. Very good, thank you. Good evening, Kara. It's nice to have you here this evening. Um, so my question is, please describe an experience in the past during which you worked with a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives. Ah, good one. Um, so quite recently, actually, um, COVID, as everyone is fully aware, has um, really done a lot of destruction to um, small businesses, large businesses, uh, the unemployment rate is just uh, skyrocketed. Um, REITs have been dramatically um, influenced due to COVID, um, my own company included. Um, we recently had a rather large layoff about a couple months ago. Uh, and in doing so, we're pressed to sort of clear out our portfolio um, and put on these mass whole loan trades um, while everybody is under extreme stress and ten tensions and not knowing whether they're going to be employed or stay employed. Um, and, you know, we managed to make, to make it through, um, you know, successfully closing all of our uh, trades that we had executed. Um, we're currently in the middle of our last trade that we've got coming to market here very soon. Um, but it's just working with a bunch of, you know, different personalities. And when people get stressed out, um, their personalities tend to change. So it's just being able to maneuver that and kind of keep everyone calm and level-headed and, um, you know, get through it. So. Well, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate your answer. Hello, Kara. I am Cheryl Wink, a council member at large, and I would like to know what you like about Englewood. I love Englewood. I love living here. Um, 
you know, I, I really didn't know much about it until, you know, we were shopping around with our realtor and he made us look at, my gosh, we must have looked at like 50 properties all over the Denver area. Um, and we ended up looking at three right in, you know, a three block radius of where we landed. Um, and it's just, it's, I love how walkable it is. I love how there are parks everywhere. I love how people can walk in the street. You see families with baby carriages walking down the middle of the street. It's calm, it's quiet, it's safe. Um, you know, it's a short ride up to downtown. There's an easy connection to all of the bike trails, which are just awesome. It's super cool, all of the connecting trails in the neighborhood. Um, and it's, I just love it. It's a really fun place to live. Excellent, thank you so much, Kara. Yeah. Hi, I'm John. I am a Inglewood City Council member at large. And my question for you tonight is, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? So I think I would like to see, um, you know, overall, I, I think I did what code enforcement and zoning and planning. Um, you know, regarding the code enforcement, I, I want to see our spaces kept beautiful. Um, and I want it to be, you know, I want Englewood to be a place that people are proud to live um, and that drives people in to visit. Um, so, you know, what that looks like, I'm not really sure. Um, I've lived in, you know, smaller communities in my past that have had extremely strict code enforcement policies um, to the fact to the point where they are controlling what color paint you can paint the inside of your house if it can be seen from the street um, that's excessive <laughs> but you know something along the lines of um, kind of having people um, you know just contribute in a way that's positive uh, to a clean space a safe place um, and just overall makes people proud to want to live here. Um, regarding the code and zoning enforcement, I would definitely love to see, um, you know, some policies or development that, you know, provides long-term sustainable growth for the city. Um, not, you know, some short-term band-aid to fix a quick, you know, quick fix of a problem. Um, I would definitely would like to see things thought through um, for long-term development. So. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. I'm Linda Olson. I'm, uh, I represent District 2 and the mayor for the council. Uh, regular meetings and engagement in those meetings is really important for the health and the work of those groups for the boards and commissions. Uh, would you be able to attend the scheduled meetings of the organization or the boards that you have signed up for? And do you see any challenges in the future? Uh, yep, I don't see any challenges. Um, definitely not in the foreseeable future. There's, I don't plan on having any business trips scheduled for quite some time. Um, but even so, I, I don't imagine it would be an issue, so. And you signed up for three. Are you willing to do any others uh, or more than one? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, wherever you, you think my skills can be an asset, um, you know, to the city, I'm more than happy to participate wherever needed. Great, thank you. Member Questa. You bet. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Frangipane. My name is Dave Quest. I'm with District 4, and my question is, how will your service on this Border Commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? So, uh, I'm not so sure how, um, you know, professionally it will benefit me, other than, you know, from a networking standpoint. Um, personally, you know, I, I moved here two years ago. Um, and I really just want to be better connected to, you know, the city and the community that I live in. Um, you know, I want to get more involved and meet other, you know, participants and volunteers um, and really just do what I can to kind of make Englewood a, a better place um, and make it more desirable for people to want to live here and visit our downtown and come to our restaurants and, you know, hang out in our bars and do some local shopping. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what it would do for me. That's great. Thank you for replying. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have a question for us? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, I was listening along and any, I think anything I would have asked has already been, uh, asked of you guys. So. Well, thank, thank you for you being very such much. patient. <laughs> no, I'm sorry for, for being late. So thank you very much for all your time. Well, appreciate it. All right. We'll be in touch with you in the next week to two weeks. Thank you so much. Take care, Kara.
Okay. Thank bye. You. All right. Next is Melissa. And I think we have her on audio. Are you able to turn your video on? Good evening, Melissa. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Are you able to hear us? Yes. Okay. Do you want the video on or is it not working? It probably is. I'm so sorry. I'm not good at this. It's okay. Most people, <laughs> it's not their normal thing. <laughs> there is a, a, video. On the bottom of your black screen to the, to the left on the bottom. If you put your cursor over, there might be a video <laughs> allowing. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, I really right? apologize. I apologize for checking in before. That's okay. We're trying to be on. We just could hear what was ever going on there. So we just want to make yeah. sure we had some privacy. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, being uh, for coming back. And we have seven questions we're going to ask. Each council member is going to ask one. And then hopefully we'll have a minute at the end for you to ask. But we're trying to keep it to 10 minutes. So okay. Mayor Pro Tem is going to begin. Good evening, Melissa. This is Othaniel Sierra, Mayor Pro Tem and City, uh, City Council Member for District 1. Uh, question for you, Melissa, is uh, what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Board of Commission at this time? Um, mostly just because I love Inglewood and just kind of wanted to be a little more involved. And I particularly love the library, so I thought that would be, you know, a good thing to get involved with. All right, good enough reasons. Thank you so much, Melissa. Hi, hey, Melissa. Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Thank you for applying. Uh, what skills or abilities or knowledge do you bring to the table for the Public Library Board that would be beneficial, and how would Inglewood benefit from your service on, on uh, the Public Library Board? Uh, well, the main thing is I just love libraries. I've always got libraries all my life, and especially the Inglewood Library. But um, I was an administrative assistant for 35 years, and I'm organized and I'm open to new ideas and I don't know I just think it would you know I'm I I can look at ideas with a fresh mind and uh be objective and and I just think you know I'm just really like it like the library so I'd like to help out with it very good thank you hi Melissa it's council member Russell, council member at large. It's good to see you. And thank you for applying um, <clears throat> for this board. My question for you tonight is, can you describe an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse and sometimes opposing views and perspectives? Well, yeah, I mean, I worked for 30 years at the, it was, the CU Health Sciences Center at the time, now it's UC Health, but yeah, we had all kinds of views and worked together and had to work on grants and, um, you know, work as a team on different grant projects, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm really used to working with people and all kinds of different ideas. Well, great. Thank you very much. Hello, Melissa. <laughs> Cheryl Wink, at-large member. You're one of the people council used to see every single week, so it's good to see your face again. <laughs> um, so my question for you is what do you love about Englewood? Mm, about Englewood in general? Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just love the friendly people and I just love the way it's growing and a lot of young people are moving in and um, I don't know, I've lived here 37 years and I've just always really liked it. It's, it's like it's, you know, got all the necessities you need but more of a small town feel like people say and it's just i don't know it's just a very close-knit type community i think yep very good thank you melissa thanks member stone i apologize i am council member john stone uh member at large and my question for you tonight is what would you like to see improved in inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you <laughs> Regarding the boards and commissions? That you applied for, yeah. Oh, well, I don't know really that anything needs to be improved. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I just wanna be part of it, you know, and help in the decision making, but I don't know that, you know, I think, I mean, the libraries run really well, so I don't, you know, I don't know that there needs to be improvement so much. I just feel like I could add to it. 
I appreciate that a lot. Thank you, Melissa. I'm Linda Olson, and I'm, I serve District 2 and as mayor. Uh, regular attendance and engagement in our boards and uh, uh, commissions is really important for them to function well and perform well. Will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings of the library board? And do you see any challenges for that in the future? Oh, no. I mean, I'm retired. You know, I have lots of time, and that wouldn't be an issue at all. Great. Are you interested yeah. in working on anything other than the library board? Not really. I, I belong to the Inglewood Historic Society too, and I was volunteering with that a little bit. Um, you know, not spending a lot of time, but I was doing that. But now, really, the library is my main focus. Just that's really I'm good. Good. Thank you. Number questions next. You bet. Good evening, Mrs. Adams, and thank you for applying. I think you may have touched on this in a couple of your prior answers, but the question is. How will your service on this board or commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, or either personally or professionally? Uh, just by being involved in Inglewood and feeling like I'm contributing something, you know, and helping something. And I just think the Inglewood Library, the Inglewood Library is so great. So I just want to see it continue to really do well and, you know, progress along and kind of be open to everybody. And I don't know. You bet. Well, I agree. Thank you, Mrs. Adams. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Are you aware it's the 100th birthday of the library? Yeah, right now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's so exciting. Yeah. It's a sad time to be trying to celebrate it when we can't really get together, but we're going to do it all year long as much as we can. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Um, I don't think so. I'll just have to get really familiar with, you know, different policies as a library and that kind of thing if I am chosen, but yeah. Sure, there's a little bit of an orientation that you, know, you would put everyone through, so you'd get some. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for being willing to uh, serve. Uh, we'll be letting you know within the next week to two weeks, um, and so you should hear from the office sometime in that framework. Okay, and I'll work on my Zoom skills in the meantime. <laughs> you did just fine. Now you're an expert. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, thanks. Next is Francisco. Hello. Did I say your name correctly? Yes. Or Francesco <clears throat> or Francisco. I know it could maybe be either way. <laughs> sure, Francisco's fine. Okay, great. Um, so I'm not sure if you were aware of what we're doing, but every council member is gonna ask one question. We have seven of them. Hopefully we'll keep it in under 10 minutes and, hope, and give you some time to ask us a question if sure. there's yeah, thanks for joining us and being willing to be a little bit late here. We're trying to I think we're doing where you're our last one. We're on track now. Yeah. <laughs> so Mayor Pro Tem is going to begin. Good evening, Francisco. This is Othaniel Sierra, City Council Member here in District 1 and Mayor Pro Tem. Um, my question for you, Francisco, is what motivates you to apply for an Inglewood Border Commission at this time? Uh, I used to be a district attorney for Arapahoe County for four years. Uh, and I really miss uh, serving my community. And as a district attorney, I saw the best and the worst of what was in Inglewood. And I want to try to continue to bring out the best in Inglewood. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hi, Francisco. Thanks for applying. My name is Joe Anderson, District 3 Council Member. Um, my question for you tonight is. What particular skills or abilities do you bring to the board you've applied for, which I see as a water and sewer board? Uh, yes. and, uh, and how would uh, Inglewood benefit from your service on that board? I think being a, a, an attorney gives me a certain special set of skills to be able to wade through certain policies, procedures. Uh, I'm not afraid of looking at mountain, mountains of paperwork, talking with people who have opposing ideas, concurrent ideas, and uh, I'm willing to listen through anyone's ideas and policies. Very good, thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks. Good evening, Francisco. I'm Rita Russell, council member at large, and you've kind of already touched on my question, uh, but it's describe an experience in the past during which you worked in a group of people with diverse 
and sometimes opposing perspectives and views? Well, I think you kind of said it right. Uh, as a district attorney, that was my job every day was to deal with individuals who didn't always agree with my thought process and the system doesn't work unless we work together. Um, so that's something I, I still do uh, every day. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for your service also. Oh. Hi, Francisco. I am Cheryl Wink, council member at large. Hi. Thank you for applying. So my question for you this evening is what do you like about Englewood? I like the potential that Inglewood has to continue to grow the people, the places. Um, you can see examples of it even in this coronavirus time. My wife <clears throat> and my son will go for walks and I think every house or every other house is at least doing a little bit to clean up or to kind of do some little projects. And so you can see people want to make their neighborhood uh, a better place. Excellent, thank you so much. Yeah. And I am council member John Stone, uh, council member at large. And my question for you tonight is, what would you like to see improved in Inglewood regarding the boards and commissions that you applied for? I'd like to make sure that we keep water quality and water rights to Inglewood citizens available at affordable rates uh, and to continue protecting that precious resource for that a lot of people take for granted. Awesome, thank you. I guess that's me next. Uh, uh, regular attendance and engagement in the boards and commissions that are operating is really important for them to function well and serve the city as a whole. Will you be able to attend the scheduled meetings of the board that you've uh, applied for? And do you see any challenges in the future? No, I, I think I took a look at the uh, dates and times that they meet and that will not be a problem. And I, I think you just put the water and sewer board down. Are there any others that you'd be interested in serving on or more than one? I'm certainly open if the need is available. Um, obviously, I know that there's other individuals applying for various spots, but um, I'm more than happy to put my experience and opportunities as, as an attorney um, to use. So wherever the community needs me. Member Questus next. Good evening, Mr. Martinez. Uh, my name is Dave Questa. I'm with District 4. Thank you for applying. And my question is, how will your service on this board or commission benefit you as an Inglewood citizen, either personally or professionally? I think just personally, as I mentioned before, I really miss being able to serve the community and just doing what I can to be able to make it a better place than when I first found it. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I think you all, uh, everything has been spelled out very clearly uh, on Inglewood's website. And so if there's any follow-up that's needed, feel free to, to reach out. Great, and, and the same for you to us, if, the, if something comes to your mind. Uh, we'll be making decisions um, somewhat this evening and into the next week to two weeks. And so you'll be hearing from the manager's office um, very soon. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. Thank you for your willingness and for coming tonight. Appreciate Thank it. You. All Thank right. You. Take care. Bye, Francisco. All right. Well, we are really on track again. <laughs> Jackie, is there any anybody that I don't think we missed anybody? Kara came. That was so, everybody. Yeah, we got everybody in, and it's eight thirty-three. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you want to take a quick five minute break, stretch break, and then come back and do you want, do you want 10 or five? No, you don't want any. I'm ready to go. Let's just keep going. All keep right. going. Well, does anybody need a bio break? No, okay. We'll, we'll get through this then. Member Wink, push us through. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the um, I wonder if the best way to do this would be to start with the one, if you printed them off, like I have the ACE, start at the top and see uh, what do you think, who should be there, who are some possibilities, we might have more than one. Uh, but let's, as we do this, let's, we'll consider reappointments as well. So starting with ACE, um, there are three people for reappointment. 
do you see any problem in wanting to reappoint any of them? They all looked like they were in good standing and the letters of recommendation were positive. You okay with just putting all three of them in, which then leaves an alternate. Stand all that I kind of feel guilt. I feel like I, I'd like to leverage him beyond that. You know, he was willing to serve in more than one. So maybe we should back up for a minute. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of people that applied that have lived here under less than two yeah. years, like right. way yeah. more than we have ever had. Right, my whole time on council, it's it's almost astounding. Uh, maybe I should ask Dugan. Uh, can we talk about it now, or uh, we can't make a decision? But can we? chat about a recommendation for this and whether we want a recommendation for this? Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, you certainly could chat about it. You can't make any decisions regarding okay. it, obviously. Um, I think it's part of the code and part of the uh, your policy, I believe. I'd have to look at that. I don't know for certain. Yeah, I think it's it's our policy, no less yeah. than two years. And it's not something that was on the agenda. No. So that's a concern. So are we allowed to tentatively put some people down and then uh, deal with the policy? Or do we have to just say that's our policy, we can't do anything with it tonight? I think you would have to say that's your policy, we can't do much about it tonight. Okay. I, I'm afraid I, I, I'm going to default to that answer. Okay. Uh, Mayor, may I? I'm, I'm trying to get my hand up here. Oh, go ahead. I see Member Anderson's hand, but not yours. Excuse me. Go ahead. Pardon me, Joe. I'm jumping in line. Pardon me. Yeah, I was, um, I was just wondering if this, I, it seemed like there were some that uh, were, uh, were boards and commissions where either in charter or code it specified um, I'm just going off memory here. I don't remember which, which boards are where it's specified in either code or charter that they had to be a, a, a citizen of England for a certain period of time, but maybe not for all of them. And maybe the rest is just, is just policy. I thought we had a little more flexibility on policy, but maybe, I, I don't know. Is it, am I, am I remembering that wrong? Uh, I'm looking at charter now. It's going to take me a few minutes to go through it. Jackie, do you have that? Member Wink, if you have it, go ahead. Uh, I don't think I have anything, but um, what, would it be, would it maybe be easier to look through our most recent boards and commissions handbook since, um, since it was just revised? Right, that is where it is. I don't have it in front of me though. Yeah, okay. I don't have it either. Let me go get mine. Let me see if I can find it. I should have it on. Why don't we do this? Can we take a five minute break while we look for it? Member Questa, you have your hand up though. Is it related? Uh, yeah, it, it's brief and it's for Mr. Comer as well. Uh, and, and I see your point that this wasn't on agenda so it might be a, a subject we don't wanna broach even per conversation this evening. Um, however, is this something if we get it on and I assume we'd have to have two votes on this? Does that sound correct, Mayor? Uh, I, you, I think you adopted your policy by, did you adopt it by resolution or ordinance? I, I believe it was by resolution. It's very easy to change. Gotcha. I, yeah. think, I might be wrong, but that's sure. what I remember. Um, I mean, it could very well be at our next meeting we change this policy, which could change the conversation this evening as well. I mean, two of the right. folks yep. that wanted library, I think, did not hit that two-year threshold. And, and I know that we're, we'd certainly enjoy some more company on that board. Um, so that's just one example. And I know there's many others also. So I, it, it is that does complicate things for me a little bit this evening. Um, at, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mayor. But, so that's a good question. And then Jackie, uh, dates, we have some dates that we're trying to fall in earlier this afternoon. You told me we could push this back. So well, that we could... You mean for discussion or? For the final de decision. So then we'd have to back up from that. But 
Because we were going to bring it forward on the 15th. The next meeting would be July 6th. I mean, it's happened before where we've done the appointments after, because most of the appointments are up the 1st of July anyhow. But I don't think there'd be any meetings missed because it is 4th of July week. So we could bring it back to resolution on the 6th. Okay, great. That's and helpful. if you wanted to maybe, I don't know if you have room on the 22nd to discuss during a study session. But I think in the past you did go through like the reappointments right after the interviews. Yeah. You just didn't vote on, nothing was set in stone. Yeah, I think we probably could do, uh, the ones we know we're gonna definitely be able to do and the reappointments and then anybody else that fits in. And then we could hold off on the ones that we're not sure of yet. Uh, but I wonder if we ought to take a five minute break to take a look at that. But member Quest, did you have another question? Your hand is still up. Okay, member Wink. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I have here, uh, I have the section under residency under criteria for appointment to boards and commissions. Um, May I read it? Please do. Appointment to most boards, commissions, or committees must by state law, ordinance, resolution, or city requirements be limited to residents of the city of Englewood. Persons residing outside the city may be considered and appointed to positions not legally restricted to city residents when determined appropriate by the city council only when residents of the city are not available. Then it moves on to clinical record. It doesn't say anything in this handbook in, uh, in this legal thing that Attorney Brown gave us. It doesn't say anything about the length of time. And so I'm wondering if Mr. Comer said what he said because is because the two year stipulation, does that come from charter? Or does that usurp what's here then? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. No, I am looking at the charter right now It, it could be that we just changed it, Member Wink, and we're forgetting that we changed it. <laughs> and I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing anything in the charter. Yeah, I, right. And I, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm curious to know what Mem Mayor Pro Tem seems to remember all these details as well. I have a feeling we really aren't bound by any two-year limit. I think, yeah. I, yeah, I actually just jumping in here. I don't recall this. I remember having the discussion. I remember having the discussion around ACE, just specifically around ACE in, in, in the sense that they didn't have to reside within the city, but I remember just going through some of the material. But again, this is just me going off of conversation. I don't remember having this type of requirement for all boards, possibly only the quasi judicial boards, but I can't recall this ever being like a true requirement. May I step in for a moment? Please sure. do. So planning and zoning under the charter, section 56, members must be residents of the city at least one year prior to the day of their appointment. Mm -hmm. Now that's for planning and zoning. And that's the same for board of adjustment. And So it sounds as if it's probably the quasi-judicial groups then. I'm not seeing that under water and sewer right I'm now. Not. Oh. Yeah, I'm not either. So it's just kind of piecemeal. And I'm not seeing that for the library board. Real quick, Mayor Olson, I did just send over the policy you guys adopted to all council. I just sent it through an email. Yeah, it sounds like from the policy that we did not set those times, but there may be some things in charter for a few of them that are, res you know, that we're remembering as, as some of these, which is, if it's one year, I think we've got that met on these. We do have one um, candidate who is not a U.S. citizen. Oh, God, yeah. So I believe that might preclude her from being on a board, but not necessarily volunteering in some way in the city. 
Would that be true, Dugan? Does it say citizen or resident? It says residents and with regard to planning and zoning and board of adjustment, they also have to be qualified electors. Yeah, I think that's what I remember is that it has to be a qualified elector, but then we don't know whether people are, they're qualified. Right. To, <laughs> they're, they're qualified to, but they have to be registered. Yeah, we need to clean up some of this probably. We have some more things that we're discovering. I think we should go through this as if everyone is qualified. I and agree. Then, and then ask um, you, Dugan and, and Jackie, to take a look and see if we're making some mistakes here. We're all we're doing is putting together a slate of consensus and it's not a decision tonight anyway and it can be undone uh, and, and we can discuss other things the next time we meet as well. Is that agreeable for everyone? Anybody disagree with that? I'm okay with that approach. All right, I don't, the two year thing I think came up the last time as well because one of the folks said that they didn't meet the requirements. And so I think we're having residues of conversations that aren't making sense now. So let's begin at the ACE and, and keep going. And then this is all tentative anyway. So for ACE, um, are you okay with Nathan, Amy and Drevis being reappointed? And then who would you like for the alternate? Steve, Paul? Yes. Yeah. Andy does not own a business right now, so that I think would mean, I, I sure hope he would get involved, that would be great to have him. Yeah, so I did have a question around that is, what is the requirement around owning a business or not owning a business for that board? You they have, they, to, to, they have to own a business. Yeah. They have to own a business, gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. In, so then yeah. Andy would not be eligible for that anyways. He, he would have been a uh, strong candidate for me for that. But, he um, would be really great with the chamber and some things that the mm -hmm. chamber is doing right now, especially with some um, startups. So it might be good to put him in touch with some folks there. Yeah. All right, Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Mark is our only one who actually suggested that one. So, oh, may I speak? Go ahead. Uh, I kind of feel like Francisco Martinez would be beneficial here, um, but it's only, you know, but I'd like to, you know, to challenge him in other ways, but, but I ended up thinking he might be good here okay. uh, because of his legal background, obviously, probably, obviously. Um, and Mark certainly gave the go ahead to be on almost anything. Right. <laughs> do we know what night the, uh, the BOA meets? We yes. do. <laughs> Second Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. I'm sorry, which day was it? Second, Second Wednesday, Wednesday of each month. Okay. And was that the only day that he couldn't do, Mr. Martinez? Oh, that's right. No, no, no. He is able. Okay, so he is available on Wednesdays, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that would work. Should we tentatively like put Martinez there then? Anybody else have an opinion about that? Just pencil him in. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, then on to budget advisory. Uh, our reappointment would be Chelsea Noonan Camp. Are you okay with that? Okay. Code Enforcement Advisory Committee, we have three reappointments. Any problems there? Mm -hmm. And then we have Kara, Sonia, and Mark. We have two more positions, one of them being an alternate. I think Kara makes sense here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with Kara. Yeah, I think Kara. Yeah. Do you, same. Do you have a suggestion Kara. for a um, for an alternate? Mm. I'd go with Sonia as an alternate on that. 
I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay. So, so just real quick, there would be two, because there's three reappointments, and then there's still two regular and then one alternate, correct? No. Yes, you're right, sorry. Yeah. There are three reappointments with the, yeah, in three applicants. So there's actually one, two, oh, yeah. there's room for everybody. One being an alternate. There's room for everybody, one being an alternate. Oh, I miscounted that. In Mayor, one of those, the expiration is next year because somebody had backed out. Just so you know, there's different expiration dates on those. So they would have to reapply whoever in a year one year one okay so who would you like to put into the one-year appointment i would put uh sonia in there and then um hold off on leave the uh, the alternate member open until we see because since mark was willing to go anywhere see where he's needed most but since that was sonia's first choice i think it makes sense to put her there yeah all right I think that can work. Thank you, good idea. Cultural arts, David Carroll would be a reappointment. Everybody okay with that? And yeah. then it would be, uh, we have Julie Parker and, and Reese Adams. They both yeah. could serve. Oh yeah. Yep, yeah, put them all, all in right. there. Great. Yep, absolutely. Housing authority, Paula Grimes wants a reappointment. I think she's, Got to go from their committee. And then Mark again, of course, said he would be willing to serve there. You know, we don't okay, uh, So will we put him at the alternate then? Yeah. You the know, housing we, authority brought this up on uh, the meeting on Wednesday, this last Wednesday, and they would like to see somebody appointed here. Okay. They would like to have an alternate. So it might, it might make good sense to put Mark here. Let's put him there. Yeah, yeah. it was his first choice, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Member Anderson, how often does the Eagle Housing Authority meet? Is it every month? It's every month. Okay. First Wednesday. And it's earlier. It's like four or something, isn't it? Or four thirty? Yeah, it's four. Four o'clock. All right. Then firefighters pension board. Uh, we had someone who signed up for police pension. Mark again, but no one under fire. And Jackie, are we in a place where we're gonna not have a quorum with the firefighters? Although I have to admit we meet only once or twice a year. I will have to check on that. Um, they haven't had anybody for a while. Okay. We, we could leave that open still. Uh, I believe so, we have... Um, well, there's one. So we have George, we have one, we have a chair. It looks like there's a one vacant right now. We have Deborah, Maria, Linda, and Steve on the board. I, and I think that's a quorum and we haven't had any trouble making it. I believe it. so. Yeah. We, but yeah. I can, I'll check that with you in, in the morning. Okay. We'll, we'll leave that one open then for now. Historic preservation, we have uh, Cash and Jason being uh, asking for a reappointment. Do you have any trouble with that? They would take the first and second regulars. And then the third. Um, Meg, of course, was the one who pulled out of that one. So we have an opening there. Any thoughts, anyone? Hmm. I wrote someone in, but I don't want to speak first again. Go for it. I, I thought maybe this was an opportunity for Mr. Martinez to have a regular appointment. Um, yeah, so I put Francisco Martinez. So he would do this and then be alternate on BOAA. Okay, that's a possibility. And we could ask him if he's willing to do that. Yeah, he responded pretty positively to you. Um, question, Mayor. 
but yeah. Uh, my only thought on Francisco is that I think I'm, I'm trying to get to waterboard and I think yeah. that we need two people and one is a reappointment. I'm trying to get to the notes here. Pardon me. And I think he's the only other one that expressed interest is an alternate. He would have to be. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. Um, I did have him as alternate there. It's a good point. So you need to add Colin Hagerty to that list. If you didn't download that one, he was also interested in modern sewer board. Yeah, I think Colin should be the regular member there. With his background, it's hard not to put him there. Mm -hmm. all right, do you all just want to put Colin in there now? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think he's the right and, fit for the regular member. Yeah. There, there isn't a reappointment on that board, interestingly no. enough. Um, well, the, the, the one person I was thinking, I was going back to my notes because I know somebody was talking about historical preservation. And it was actually Helene. Mm -hmm. um, actually, she wasn't talking about historical, she was talking about more, mostly the architects, right? So I guess I'm just grasping at straws here, but potentially maybe, oh. since she did love a lot about Inglewood, maybe that would be one thing. I haven't looked at her background to really see if that's something that she would want to do. Sorry. Bless you. The key word that I wrote down. Where else did she? She had public library board, right? Yeah. And she, yeah was library. Willing, she was she willing to do more yeah. than one. Yeah, she only marked library on her app, but she did verbally say. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of energy. I liked. Yeah. I, I definitely want her on the library board. Um, I think that she'd be a really, really beneficial fit there. I, yeah. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I just thought, wow, what a. Well, so maybe. Um, but I do think historic back. preservation would be good for her too. Oh, maybe okay. that's better. Yeah. Let's do that. So can we just, just verify the dates? Because I don't have that dates on, on here. But they, <laughs> preservation meets on Thursday nights, correct? Yeah, I, I serve on both those boards and there's there's not a conflict. Okay. So it should there be we Tuesday go. Or Wednesday. Or Wednesday. Or Wednesday. They're not on the same night, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, so we're putting Federici for the alternate on historic preservation. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Helene. Right? So I'm able to yeah, pronounce Helene. them there, Cheryl. And so Martinez would be off. Right. Perfect. Okay. All right, Ben. Uh, can we move down to Cape Ango Beautiful? Did I skip one in between? You didn't. Okay. No, you're good. Okay, Cape Ango Beautiful, we have a uh, so I guess, can we have Raphael? Is it Duche or is it, how do you say her last name? It looks like Duche to me, or to me. Uh, Raphaela Duche. She was delightful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't I think she'd I be mean, really great there. Can't. Yeah, it's can legal. We, yeah, you know what? Yeah, if it's, if it's okay, I think we would have then, uh, Raphael and Mark, possibly, or is there someone else? Frangipane. Might uh, be good here. I, I thought the personalities of Raphael and Cara and their backgrounds would really add a huge bucket of um, increased value with the two of them <laughs> on that group, I, I thought. <laughs> Um, if, Kara's, if Kara's interested in doing a second one. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree with that. Same. So then Kara would be code enforcement. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So we have her on code enforcement right now, right? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Monica, Julie, Colleen, and then Helene, right? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Tell me who you yeah. have on cultural, I mean, sorry, code enforcement again. Yeah. Monica, Julie, 
Kobe. Kara and Sonia. Kara and Sonia. And Sonia's in the one year. And leaving the alternate open. Right. Sorry, I, I put Sonia's name in there twice. All right. Um, next one. Monica. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't catch what, what was the, the keeping or beautiful that you, you wanted to put both Raphael and and Kara. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we just don't have a third, is that correct? From what I can tell, yeah. Yeah. We've okay. haven't had trouble getting quorum, so that's fine. They have? You yeah. have? We haven't. No, we have not. Oh, okay. Mark that's and it has Oganoski. Mark Oganoski also applied for that. That's his fifth choice. Correct. <laughs> yep. Let's come back to those extra filled ones and see if we have others that we haven't put into anything. Monica is and so Parks and Rec is the next one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Monica. Yeah. I I also had her for planning and zoning, to be honest. Monica? I, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought Colin would be good yeah. for planning and zoning. I thought Colin would be good everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think he specifically had planning and zoning was his second choice after water and sewer board. I know he can't do both uh, but francisco was a really good fit for water and sewer so i wouldn't i wouldn't mind considering colin for playing and zoning i think you meant colin was a good fit for water sewer the one that's the yeah. 25 years yeah, right. engineer water engineer yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it would be a good fit there yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit so but then what does that mean for planning and zoning Right. And I'm just seeing the one open position in it in Carl, Mr. Carl Adams, he's the alternate. And so he's being proposed to remain in the alternate seat and then we would fill the regular seat. Is that what it's suggesting? Yeah, I, I think so at this point, the letter from the committee was to do that. Mm. Oh really? I thought it was for Carl, for Mr. Adams to be moved right. from alternate into this singular spot mm -hmm. of regular on this sheet. That, that's not what the letter said. Oh, right. I, yeah. I must have misread it. Oh, all right. I, so, I, I, I it, it, sometimes I'm, I'm bothered by putting a new person in when there's been somebody who's sitting on that board uh, is an alternate and there's a position to fill. My preference would be Carl. I, I acknowledge that, that there's that letter uh, and I, I didn't read that myself. I'll take a look, Merrillson. But uh, just the fairness of it, it always seems that the alternate should be next in line. And, and to me, we all know that Mr. Adams, he's a pretty dedicated guy. He's been devout and coming to all the meetings that we have. Um, so he, to me, is as good a candidate as any day to have a regular seat on that, um, from my perspective. Thank you, Mayor. So my question then would be, then why have reference let or letters at all? Because if we're going to go against what they've asked, I've, we've never gone against them. I think it's their thing. If they're saying no, then no for right now. We've got six months yet for another possibility. I would still say, Mayor Olson, we are the final word on that. They give oh, us we are. reasons all we are. the time and we can override it. Yeah, we are. I uh, would like, yeah, I would say at this point, we go with what the committee says. I, I am not in agreement on that, but there's seven of us here. Right. Yep. Member Wink, got your hand up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I apologize. I, I feel like I, I must have skipped that meet that for some reason. And I read letters. Um, so, okay. So Mr. Colin Haggerty listed P and Z as his first choice, right? Mr. Civil Engineering, Water Engineering, PMP certification, uh, right? But we have him under water and sewer because he's so perfect there. Correct? Everybody with me? I'm, so I'm perfect for a couple. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to make sure. So what I'm hearing is that Mr. Adams is already approved to move to a regular position outside of this blank line I'm looking at. It seems no. confusing because that's not what's happened across the rest of this. No, you're not. That's not correct. He's not. Okay. He's an alternate. He is an alternate right now. We have to decide whether or not he moves up, and then we could. And if he does, then there's no. There's no opening there. Yeah, I, I, kind of, I think I Pardon? share Mr. Oh, sorry. I thought my hand was still up. Oh. Sorry. No, it's okay, Mr. Stone. I have just a final set statement. I'll, I, I think I agree with Mr. Cuesta that. Um, it is a little tough. Um, it just, it's, it's tough to pass over dedicated citizens that have been serving on a board as an alternate to not a regular position. Unless as a council, we wanna to come together and decide there's some difference on quasi-judicial boards or some difference. Maybe we can do that at some point, but it just seems fair to move Mr. Adams up. Thank right. you. Member Russell's next and then Member Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with Council Member Wink and Council Member Cuesta. And the fact that it's only the chairman that writes the letter, um, I think that there's fairness, but it's one person's opinion. Mr. Adams has been there all seven times. He has not missed a meeting, even though he is the alternate. And he's been a very committed citizen for a long time. And I think that, um, in my opinion, we need to move him up. And, um, and the one person I think, um, Colin Haggerty really has only lived here 11 months. Um, so I think that's another thing as far as the um, PNZ. So thank you. Member Anderson, you're next. Um, I, I, um, I want to, I kind of feel like this is a discussion that needs to ha that maybe should happen at the actual council meeting, but I, I could, I could definitely um, see going, reading this letter. I'm looking at the letter right now, um, considering an alternative, but I could also see considering Mr. Adams. I want to, I want a little more time to process it and I'd like to discuss it at the regular council meeting. Okay. Um, Member Stone. Thank you. So, um, I, uh, I actually agree with uh, members uh, Russell, Wink, and Cuesta on this. I think that uh, my personal interactions with Carl has uh, painted a different picture than the one that I read in this letter. And, um, you know, I, I actually personally have uh, questioned some of the decisions of the PNZ board as a whole um, over the past couple of years. And so I would like to see some changes. Um, I think that part of the reason that we have terms of service and that those come to an end is so that we can change things from time to time. And I think that it would be a good idea to get some uh, new ideas on that board um, in the form of somebody who's put in a lot of time to be there but has not been able to be a member that weighs in on things at this point. So I would support Carl uh, being appointed to the regular position, which would open an alternate position. Um, and so we would still have an open position to fill because he would be leaving the alternate position and we'd have to backfill that. Because I believe we appointed him to that alternate position six months ago when that term was up. So that's still got a year and a half left, I believe. And I think, I think you're right that one thing that's missing on this form is there should be one regular member and an alternate, and then you could put, you know, you could, there should be a second line there. Mm -hmm. um, Mayor Pro Tem? No, obviously I don't like having this conversation, but in, in terms of moving forward, I, I still would prefer to take the recommendations of the chair, but obviously this is a decision that council can make. As a All whole. right. Let's, uh, I mean, we, we don't want to be voting, right? So let's do this. Let's pencil him in and let's also consider that we will have this conversation when we have our next meeting, when we make a formal decision and vote. Member Russell and Member Sierra, you both have your hands up. Okay, that was just you already talked. <laughs> All right. Um, then the Police and Fire Supplemental Disability Board. I thought we. Oh, that's not the same as the Pension Board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a lovely board. It also does not meet very often. Um, 
police pension, however, we definitely need someone on that one, I think. So Jackie, are you clear on that? Is, is the police and fire supplemental can, can handle someone not being on that right now? What I'm looking at right now, yes. And again, I'll meet with Dugan tomorrow. Okay. But on the, then the police pension board. Uh, so where do, we, where do we have Francisco Martinez right now? Just on BOA, one, right? BOAA. As an alternate? As an alternate. So with his legal background, I think that this might be something that he would take to pretty quickly. I've sat in on a lot of pension board meetings and uh, there's a lot of legalese that gets thrown around um, and a lot of like ethical considerations and stuff like that. And I think that, you know, somebody with his background would probably have um, the easiest time adapting and that he would probably excel and, and be a really helpful and beneficial addition to that board if he's available. When yeah, I need, and he could serve um, he would be allowed to because one is only one is quasi judicial, right? And this one, I think, meets not as uh, it meets more frequently than the other two. It's Tuesdays. Was he available Tuesdays? Was that one of the days he's not? I feel like it, might it meets be. during the day too, doesn't it? No. Tuesday is the day that he cannot meet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there goes that idea. Work that way in then. Um, well, if we, how many have we put Mark on? Just one. Just one. Yeah. Just one. Okay. And can I just weigh in? Uh, yeah. I, I think that pension boards really need more financial people that have actuarial experience. Um, he did. The thing that stuck out to me is he did put down that on an application. Very few people <gasps> for those um, pension boards. And so I, did, I asked him if he had experience in that. And he said, yes, I would be for putting him on that one. On the police pension. Yes. Yeah. That would give him, he'd be on that with John Moore, who's also an actuary, that'd make him too. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Right. Who sits on that board? Is it you, Member Russell? No, it's, I am on, well, wait, I am on that board. I thought so. <laughs> Mark, or, um, uh, who did you just say? John Moore. John Moore. Uh, Jim Woodward, I believe, is still on that board. Um, and mm -hmm. there are That's, some students on that board also. I have George Egri, Deborah Ward, oh. Stephen Knoll, the police and, pension board, right? Police officers pension board. Yes. Yeah. So I think, are you on the police and fire supplemental disability board, Rita? I don't know which. I think I'm on the police officers board. Am I on there, Jackie? Can you tell? I show Mayor Olson, but you know, it's possible this was not updated. No, I think I am on the pension board now. I'm on two. I'm on fire and police, but I know yeah, that you I show the mayor on the police and fire. I am on one of the pension boards. Then I have to say that this is not the best use of Mark. I mean, we'll meet once or twice a year. He's going to get frustrated. I want to make sure he's on something else as well that meets okay. more regularly and really utilizes his eagerness to serve. Put him on the Housing Authority Board, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, yeah. Let's okay. keep him on both. We're fine. Okay. We'll just put him in there for the Pension Board, Police Pension, and if uh, Jackie, if we could check in and see which of these pension and police or fire things is the most needy right now, I bet we could see if he could serve on the most uh, most needy or a quorum. Yes, I will find that out. You like that wink? <laughs> She's laughing at me. Because <laughs> I think one of them probably has trouble making a quorum, but it's not the ones I'm on. We've had no trouble. Um, it's the other one, whichever one John Moore is on. <laughs> so public library board is the last before we get to water and sewer. We have- uh, The three ones. I'm down with those three ones. Yep. All three. <laughs> yep. Andy, Helene, and Melissa. Okay. 
Say Helene's last name, Cheryl. Since you like to say it. Federici. Federici. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. Did anyone else get the feeling I got of wanting to Andy um, Zakaris somewhere additional to yes. public? Yeah. Yes. That I'm a little biased. I have to be honest. I I know of him through uh, the work that he's done for the last many years, um, and I know that he's kind of a powerhouse when it comes to fundraising, when it comes to uh, kind of organizational um, infrastructure and stuff like that. He's uh, a little bit of a legend, if you will, in some of the circles that I hang out in, um, and uh, I think that we would be well served to have him on just about anything he'd be interested in. That's what I was thinking. Um, I thought, oh, my stars. <laughs> Where else can we put him? <laughs> right. Uh, well, if Mr. Adams needs up on planning and zoning, we need an alternate. Did you want him there? I also would like to put in that I think um, Francesco might be good to be the alternate on water and sewer, but we may have others as well. But let's do uh, with. I don't mind Andy on the P and Z. Um, and actually just reading that letter um, regarding Carl's recommendation, I, I'm in uh, complete agreement with John Stone that maybe we need some new blood there. Um, so yes, I like Andy on P and Z. What? Oh. So Andy would be the alternate on P and Z? Is that what you're the yes, uh, I support the, the idea that, uh, it, it, that he'd be a good fit there. Yes. The the only question I have about Andy, how long has he lived in um, the city of Inglewood? Nine, nine, months. About nine months, yeah. Doesn't he yeah. yeah. have a um, one, year. One, one year and a registered yeah. elector of the city also or no? I know he's a registered elector of the city. Okay. Um, but he has only been here for nine months. But if, I mean, can they serve in an alternate position? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's another question. That's yeah, I think, I think well. that would be stretching it too, but I think, <laughs> you know, I'll let our lawyers weigh in on that. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> It says, it says they have to be a qualified elector and a resident of the city at least one year, immediately prior to the day of their appointment. It doesn't talk about alter, alternates, hmm. but I would apply it equally to both alternates and those who are going on as regular members. Right. So Particularly in PNZ, the alternates have had to operate as a regular hmm. office. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. So we probably can't do that. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking in terms of Andy, you know, obviously I was very impressed as well, but um, maybe we don't find something else for him this go around, but, you know, in another yeah. six months time, maybe there's something else that mm -hmm. he would be interested in reapplying for. Yes. Did we fill all of the historic preservation spots? We did, right? Um, I feel like we might have left one open. Or did I just stop filling out my form? Lost one of my sheets here. <laughs> well, I think we, the, I think the only one that we left, uh, open in terms of an alternate was CEAC. So I think uh, Eric is filled. I think to answer that question just one at a time, we have, this is the one cash, Jason, uh, Jason yeah, okay. and then Helene. Oh, right. Yep. I just stopped recording stuff. Go ahead. Um, Member Russell, your hand is up. And then Member Wink. Go ahead, Member Wink. Nothing to say. Oh, I thought you were asking something. I was sorry. answering. I was saying what you were saying. Okay. <laughs> you want to be the mayor right now? <laughs> you can check all the phone calls I've gotten in the last week. <laughs> oh. Okay. So can we, uh, Jackie, do you feel like you have <laughs> everything down? We don't have an alternate for the water. And you guys... Did I miss the water and sewer? No, uh, we didn't we have, 
Colin Haggerty on it, but then we don't have an alternate. And I think we have some people who could be the alternate. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I'm good right now. I can read it through when we're done. Yeah, I also would right. like to, to take the list of the people who applied and ask ourselves, okay, Helene, we have her right now on housing, right? I mean, sorry, history. Yeah. Is there something else she should be doing? We have her in history and library. Oh, and library. So we've got her in two, so she's great. How about mm -hmm. Sonia? CEAC. She's in CEAC. And that's that's it. Is she should be on an is she somebody you'd want in another one where there's an alternate? Did I interrupt real quick? Yes. Did I, did I miss where we put Drevis Ridley? Ah, no, you didn't. She could be the alternate no. on the water and sewer board. That was her first choice. We reappointed her to ace, but she didn't need to put that down as one of her, so she could be the water and sewer. You're right. Thank you. That's excellent. I agree with that also. That's a good, that's a good one. Uh, uh, so we're looking at Sonia for an alternate summer. Well, she also asked that she only wanted to stick to one and fill that out. That was one of her last statements. Okay. She didn't want to over herself with her statement. Yeah, she said wants one board only. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's what we put her on. All right. Uh, Reese, cultural arts. Feel good about where we put her? Yep. Mm -hmm. What did she do? What, what, I, I think I missed what her. Is she an artist? Is she a chef or an architect? Is there something about her that, that no, well, tied that correlated to that? No, well, she just had the, yeah, she's been here two years, putting roots out in the city. She's really big into the music scene, arts, has been, lived in Vegas for 12 years, was part of the HOA board for 12 years, so definitely need to put, put her somewhere fun. <laughs> Yeah, I remember her saying cultural arts is something she likes to do in mm -hmm. her free time, but I, I didn't kind of, she's, she's I don't consumer. remember the supporting language around it. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a consumer of cultural arts and enjoys it, and she was the one who came to the Black Cube event. Right. And really enjoyed that and wants to be engaged in that kind of thing. So I think, I think she's in Perfect. a good spot. She yeah. might have the professional expertise that some people on that board might have, but she has the interest, which I think is great. Oh, I think that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. She'll fit in well there too. All right. Uh, then Monica or no, Cara. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark, we gave him a couple. Mm -hmm. So you're okay with that? Yep. Kara? She's got a couple. She has mm -hmm. two as well. Monica? He has two. Code enforcement and arts and rec. Yep. Or she could be an alternate on planning and zoning. Yeah. Over Andy. Yeah, we already took Andy off because he. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think her voice would be really interesting on that PND. Yeah. I think when she, you know, I remember her running for office being very concerned about development. Yep. I do too. I mean, that would mean putting her on as alternate and deciding on something else that she would not be on. Representing oh, well, could you repeat that again, Mayor? Because what, well, do you, what is it that we're saying if you're on a judicial Quasi-judicial, you cannot serve in another. You cannot serve on another quasi-judicial. Just quasi do okay. Yeah, so she, that would be the only one. She's on. But she's not on any. No, you yeah. okay. no. could enough. serve on three. I, mean, I guess I'm asking, do you want her to? Yes. I would 
She ran for city council. I think she's okay with that. <laughs> I still like uh, Colin for that alternate slot on PNZ. Colin can't be on both that and water and sewer. Uh, right. You know, these are like little puzzle pieces, aren't they? <laughs> we all need each other to remember. Yeah. I have to admit, I like Colin even more. I'm planning and zoning, but um, but that's where I, I am. I know. Part, but it has to do with what planning and zoning actually does as a board right now, but that could change. Uh, we have a new utilities director and a new direction and a lot of things. I don't know. Uh, but I think it's a better use of them. You think it's a better use of Colin to put him on PNZ than water? Yeah. Really? Then let's maybe, does everybody else agree? I'm willing to be flexible. He's got 30 years of, or like how many years of water experience? 25 of water yeah. experience, yeah. As an engineer, and he's got the PMP certification. All right, we just leave him where he is. <laughs> yeah, I think Colin goes on water. Put, put Monica on the alternate. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Then Colin, we got all set then, right? And then Raphael, who? Oh, yeah. We put her on KEB. Yep. And then Steve is on ACE. Yep. Is there anything else there? He's he's fairly new, isn't he? So <clears throat> he's trying to figure stuff out still. Wait, wait. So are we able to put Steve on? Uh, yeah. As an on ACE. He doesn't have a business. He has his own consulting company, which oh. a good number of people on ACE do. I have to say to you, we really need to go out and try and get traditional businesses on that board. I, I, I love the people that are on there, but I think we also need some that are not just doing their own thing out of their home uh, to help bring, and particularly in the industrial area. So maybe that's a commitment we all could make to try to really recruit for the next time around. But if he, that's what he applied for. <clears throat> so we have four minutes left. Andy. And then Drevis. Andy's okay where we have him. Drevis. Mm -hmm. There's a reappointment and a new thing. Mm -hmm. Melissa Adams. Perfect match with library board. That's what she wants. Mm -hmm. And Fran Francesco. We have two possibilities, one with a pension and then the other one with a, uh, remind me what the other one is. BOAA. BOAA. So, Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Yep. All right. So Jackie, I just wanted to make, I, Jackie, maybe you can run through these, but I just wanted to go through those one by one persons because they did have a lot of energy to do a lot more. So could you run through the, what you have, Jackie, just to make sure we're all on the same page? And then I think we're done. Sure. Yep. For, for ACE, I have Nathan, Amy, Drevis, and Steve. Board of Adjustments, we have Francisco. I have a question mark because he did not put that down on his list. So I will reach out in tomorrow. Is that what you had? Yep. Yes. And we did not have an alternate for BOA. That is the alternate. That is the alternate. Oh, that is the alternate. Sorry. As the wrong line. Um, budget advisory, we have Chelsea. Code enforcement, we have Monica, Julie, Cowen, Cara, and Sonia. No alternate, correct? Correct. Okay, and then cultural arts, I have Rita, David. Um, Rita, is that board needing an alternate? Code enforcement, does it have a trouble having a quorum? They, they haven't, so I think they're okay if we point, appoint more board members. So we don't necessarily have to have an I think. Okay, just need to make sure all the positions are filled. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry, Jackie, go on. All right, um, I think I just, did I say cultural arts was David, Julie, and Teresa? Yes. Right. And then we've got Inglewood Housing, Paula and Mark as the alternate. Yes. Yep. And then I will speak with Dugan on the pension boards tomorrow. Um, historic preservation. We've got Cash, Jason, and then Helene is a question mark. 
we'll have to, I'll reach out to her because I don't believe that was on her list. Mm -hmm. And then Keeping Good Beautiful is Raphael and Cara. Just the two? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Parks and Rec, we have Monica. P and Z, we have a, I have a question mark with Carl moving up to alternate or from alternate to regular. If that happens, we have Monica down as an alternate. Yep. And then I, I have Mark down for the police and fire supplement disability board. Is that the one you want me to reach out on or is it any of the pension boards that are needing somebody? Yeah, any of the pension boards, see which one has the highest demand for another person. And, and it might be that he's willing to serve on two of them. They re and we could let him know they only meet once or twice a year, sometimes three times a year. Can we also okay. go back to Parks and Rec? Because I thought we took Monica off of Parks and Rec and put her as the alternate on PNZ. We didn't take her off. We decided that maybe she'd be okay with three boards. Okay. So I need to reach out to Monica also. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so for Monica for three boards. And then again, the pension boards, we'll get figure out which ones are in need or if they'll have a quorum. And then the public library board, we've got Andy, Helene, Melissa, and Water and Soon, we have Colin and Drevis as the alternate. Yep. Looks good. So I will reach out to them in the morning and then I'll send out a see where everybody's at and just so you have one more look before Thursday. Did you want these to come on the 15th then as a rezo? Yeah, I think we're ready, aren't we? I mean, okay. we, we can decide differently that yeah. night that we're changing things around. Yep, definitely. Good tentative state slate. Okay. Great, I think we we did really well then. Thank you everybody. That was a really uh, easier process than I thought it would be. And this meeting is adjourned and we'll see you all Wednesday night at six o'clock, all right? All right. Have a good night. Good night everyone. Good night everybody. Bye. Bye.